tears and fears and feeling proud to say I love you right out loud. Dreams and schemes and circus crowns. I've looked at life that way. Oh, but now, old friends, they're acting strange. And they shake their heads and they tell me that I've changed. Well, something's lost, but something's gained in living every day. I recall. I really don't know life at all. Just yesterday morning, they let me know you were gone. Suzanne, the plans they made put an end to you. I walked out this morning and I wrote down this song. I just can't remember who to send it to. I've seen fire and I've seen rain. Seen sunny days that I thought would never end. I seen lonely times when I could not find a friend. But I always thought that I'd see you again. Won't you look down upon me, Jesus? You gotta help me make a stand. Just got to see me through another day. My body's aching and my time is at hand. I won't make it any other way. Whoa, I've seen fire and I've seen rain. I've seen sunny days that I thought would never end. Seen lonely times when I could not find a friend, but I always thought that I'd see you again. Been walking my mind to an easy time, my back turned towards the sun. Lord knows when the cold wind blows, it'll turn your head around. Well, as I was. Time on the telephone line to talk about things to come. Sweet dreams and flying machines in pieces on the ground. Oh, I've seen fire and I've seen rain. I've seen sunny days that I thought would never end. I've 
Brave New Radio. My name is Brianna, and you're listening to our 13th annual Braveathon, our live music marathon broadcasting all day on Brave New Radio and WPTV. Right now, we're going to take it back down to TV Studio B with an interview with Wise John. You're listening to 887 Brave New Radio. <laughs> Welcome back to Braveathon. I'm Robin Snyder. And I'm Vaughn Leek. We'd like to thank Chloe's Restaurant and Tapas for sponsoring this portion of Braveathon 2023. Chloe's Restaurant is a premier and authentic restaurant that proudly serves the Patterson area and beyond. Known for their tapas, such as the Cuban Bites, street corn, and coconut shrimp, as well as their sandwiches and tacos. Chloe's Restaurant can be reached at 973-938-5304 or at their restaurant located at 304 Grand Street in Patterson, New Jersey. Fresh off the Braveathon stage, we're sitting with Wise John. Hello, it's my so guy. It's so great to have you here. Hello, happy to be here. You just um, you just rock the stage. I love. I need to know, right? I said rock the stage, but you, your Instagram bio says <laughs> great journalism. <laughs> <laughs> it says folky, proggy, jazzy, power pop, alt rock. Right. What? How do you def how do you classify all, define all that in a nutshell? I mean. So, first fun fact, Justin, my guitarist that was just on stage, yeah. he, he came up with that, like, uh, without fanfare. He, like, texted it to a friend and sent me a screenshot. I'm like, oh, that's good. That's my Instagram bio. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but, I mean, I'd say, like, defining my genre has been a struggle because it seems like it's different every song. And also, you, you don't really know until you put it out, and then you find out that something that you were submitting to, like, rock playlist turns out to be, like, power pop or something, yeah. a genre that you, you don't really, you didn't really know what it was. But, right. I mean, I'd, I'd say, like, altogether, it comes with, the way I would describe my music is, like, lyrics are forward, but it's always, hopefully, accessible. Like, I like to write things that musicians feel like is, is challenging and, and fun, and, and people that don't know music feel like it's something new, mm -hmm. but it's still, like, it, it catches, you know, it's catchy. Yeah. And, and you know, in order to, there's a little bit of the folk stuff, like Atlanta, and then there's a little bit of the rock stuff, like, like the end and a lot of my other stuff. Um, and it all kind of comes in there, but ultimately it's like, I think it's, it's kind of pop, but it's weird pop. Yeah. yeah. I get what you mean. I think one theme that I noticed within your songs, though, especially, like, the later two ones that you had, like, Marry Another Man and Mr. Love, is that it seems to center a lot around, like, relationships and what comes of that how have your relationships influenced your music well, <laughs> cool. getting deep here that is that is a deep one <laughs> i mean so part of the thing i'd say interestingly is like i my the first album that i came out with and a lot of my other music is not focused on love and i i sometimes have a harder time writing love songs so this ep was kind of a challenge for me in, in that way but <laughs> Yeah, these particular ones, definitely. Uh, I mean, Marry Another Man is... That story didn't exactly, literally happen to me, but there's, like, pieces of it you that I gathered from. you care to tell what parts did or didn't happen? Mm. You could have shared? Mm. Maybe in the hot seat. Yeah, I am <laughs> in the hot seat, huh? <laughs> well, so I had a long-term relationship that mm -hmm. fell apart, um, and then they ended up, you know, as, as they do, you know, dating somebody else, and that that's the one that put the, like, the feeling into it. Uh, but then, completely separately, and what gave me the idea for the song is, um, I, you know, there's a, a friend of mine, honestly, but we were each other's, like, first relationship way back in high school, yeah. and one time she was, like, thinking of getting married to a guy, 
And I remember, even though like we'd long since been friends and it's totally chill, uh, it just kind of hit me. I'm like, oh my god, this like this is a person that I've dated, and she's gonna get married. It, it felt real, and I, I had the idea for the song. And then also my 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 brothers recently gotten divorced, and like I fed some of that feeling and, and understanding of what he's been going through into the song. Mm -hmm. So that's where it comes from. That's really beautiful. Thanks. It's kind of sad, but like yeah. I'm glad that you're able to evoke, uh, take that emotion and put it into music. But like. How do you feel like as, you know, I feel like there's so many artists and bands that just, they say like, oh, well, like, I'm going to create something out the norm, something out of the box. What do you feel like it is that Wise John does that, like, is different mm. than other people, like other bands and artists that do what you do? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think to some extent everybody thinks this, but, like, I, I'm, I, I've lived a life that has a lot of things to draw from. Yeah. Um, you know, I, and I also never particularly, I wasn't thinking I was going to be a, a musician as any sort of primary career. It's always just something that I loved that filled up the spaces in my time. Mm -hmm. And I, I wanted to be like a, a scientist or something. And my undergraduate was in computer engineering. Yeah. And I worked wow. for NASA for a while and like made space robotics stuff. Um, and then I worked for a medical device company. I think my old boss might be listening. <laughs> but, uh, and... <laughs> I, so I've had this whole other existence, I guess, and I'm also sort of personality-wise, I, I certainly don't see myself as a, a, a rock star type, you know. I, so I, I think I can put that, and also just, I, I spent the first 25 years of my life never intending to capitalize on my music, and I'm really grateful for that, in that, like, my songs come from a place of not not telling it to anybody. Mm -hmm. I'm telling it to myself. And then that aside, you know, that's all kind of highfalutin, but I, I do think I write pretty, like, harmonically complex things that hopefully fit together. We agree. I, I think it absolutely does. And I think along with that, it seems like music has sort of swept you up on this journey. What is the most important thing that you've learned mm -hmm. while making music? Hmm... Well, I mean, part of the reason, I guess, part of what compelled me to do this is I had, uh, right before I, I started the last job um, that I left in January, last January, um, so, like, at this point, three years ago, I had kind of this, so I, I'm, I have some chronic illnesses. I, I'm wearing the glasses because I've got, uh, like, severe chronic migraine headaches. And I've got a couple other things, and most of the time they're pretty manageable, but there's been two times in my life where they've kind of come together in this, like, perfect storm. Yeah. And I was living in Hong Kong at the end of 2019. Oh, damn. Yeah. And um, that was when the protests were happening, and the kind of, like, civil everything started collapsing, and all the restaurants shut down, and my food allergies couldn't be handled, so I got really sick and kind of went into, like, a bit of a coma when I went home. Jesus. And like a relationship fell apart at the time, sort of all this stuff yeah, happened like a, at once. Like a downfall. Right, and then I started working pretty much right after I got better enough to do it, mm -hmm. but I never really dealt with with all that stuff. Um, and I think a big reason why I left to focus on this for a while was like I'm trying to figure out how to make what happened to me mentally not happened to me again you know mm -hmm. so to me music is, is resilience you know it lets you say things that you don't know how to say otherwise yeah well we love that and we're looking forward to some of the music that like you're like I keep saying to you like I I love and appreciate uh, people who can take all those emotions and uh, not compartmentalize that's not the word but like take it all bottle up and put it into something so amazing and I'm hoping and you can confirm right now if that's what we're getting on afterglow the EP that you're dropping what next week yeah. What is what can we expect from that? What is what is Afterglow for Wise John? So um, I just played it first mm. of all, uh, and then Afterglow is the like final track to come out. The other three are actually already out in Spotify. And you can yeah. listen to them now. Um, but then the, the EP as a whole, Mr. Love Sunset Show, it's it's sort of like a, a view of love from different angles, and then the last song, Mr. Love, is is like kind of from like twenty thousand feet mm -hmm. looking down. I don't know. I, I mean, I think, like, it's a little retro. I think it's fun. 
Um, and the songs like seem to be hitting pretty well with people. I don't know. I, I, I tried to take like a kind of lighthearted approach to it. It's not, even though the, some of the songs are sad, it's not like, it's a fun album, you know? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And I think we're all excited to see it. And yeah, I nice. think just for the people at home, what is the best advice you've been given? Just real quickly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the first thing to come to my head, uh, there's no way that she would hear this. I'm not, I, I think her name was Tiffany, but oh. I don't remember her last name. Tiffany's watching. And I, I, I don't know how to find her, but I was, <laughs> I was working in a biological research lab as an internship as a high schooler, and a high schooler has nothing to contribute to biological research. I was there to, you know, satisfy the urge of the postdoc to do some community service, and, mm -hmm. you know, um, and I spent the whole time trying to learn things, and yada, 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 and at the end, this postdoc, Tiffany, like, chewed me the hell out and was like, you didn't write a single thing down. I don't care if you can remember it all. Like, it's about respect and about understanding the fact that, like, this person was doing you a favor and you needed to show them, like, you know, that, that you understand the power dynamic that you're in. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, weirdly, that's, like, that's the best piece of advice that I have, is, like, understand when somebody's doing you a favor and, like, give that. them that respect. I that, love that. Thank you, you know? You don't need to do something back because sometimes you can't. You know, there's nothing that you can offer to them except for just being like, I recognize that you've done something for me. Showing your appreciation is just enough. Yeah. That's beautiful. Hey, thank you so much, John, for coming out today. Why is John, everybody? <laughs> thank you so much for being here. When we come back, this is it. It's our final performance of this year's brave -a -thon. Keep watching and listening because our last performance interview. is Interview. We're going to start with the interview. interview this time. Our last interview is from a rock band raising Arizona. Bra 88.7 Brave New Radio, thanks again to Wise John for joining us on our 13th annual brave -a -thon. If you missed out um, and you want to continue watching this last upcoming hour, watch on gobrave.org forward slash brave 2023. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at Brave New Radio and at WPTV Network on Instagram. We're going to play some more music, but we'll be back soon. You're listening to our 13th annual brave -a -thon.
thought that you could test the waters Dropping the atom bomb Now the water's turning in red Hey, fish
11 hours, 11 artists. Broadcasting from our Hamilton Hall studios. Live performances and interviews. It's the biggest music event of the year. Woo! Bravethon 2023 continues now.
1027 Brave New Radio. I'm Annie. You're listening to our 13th annual Braveathon, our live music marathon broadcasting event. We are winding it down, guys. That's it. We're coming to the last act. So right now we're going to actually throw it down to Studio B to Walker and Aria. They're actually going to be interviewing Raising Arizona. This is Annie. Welcome to the final hour of our 13th annual Braveathon. I'm Anthony Walker, an analyst on WP Sports Desk on WPTV. And I'm Aria Capria, an on-air personality from Brave New Radio. Thank you for watching our bands and artists' performances all day long. Since its inception, Brave New Radio has always done its best at championing, at championing local and lesser-known music. And WPTV continues to produce compelling content that you can't find anywhere else. Braveathon is the one event every year where both clubs unite to create such a big event. To see more of the content Brave New Radio and WPTV create regularly, follow us at Brave New Radio and at WPTV Network on social media. If you're not already, you can also go visit gobrave.org forward slash Braveathon 2023 to watch our final band of the night, Rock the House. We want to thank Chloe's Restaurant Tapas for sponsoring this portion of Braveathon 2023. Chloe's Restaurant is a premier and authentic restaurant that proudly serves the Patterson area and beyond. Known for their tapas such as the Cuban Bites, street corn, and coconut shrimp, as well as their sandwiches and tacos. Chloe's Restaurant can be reached at 973-938-5304 or at the restaurant located at 304 Grand Street in Patterson, New Jersey. Our last group for the evening is a unique band that just started last summer. Please welcome Raising Arizona. Hello. Hello. How's it going, guys? Well, Hi. we're very excited to be meeting with you guys. And one question I knew I had, I love the name, but I just have to know what was the inspiration behind it? Um, so, <laughs> obviously the movie. I don't know if you've ever seen Raising Arizona with Nicolas Cage. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yes. You and just the, jogged my memory. Oh, yes. My it's an old movie. Uh, so it's an ode to that, and also um, I was born in Tucson, Arizona. So awesome. it's kind of a play on that and kind of rising or raising um, above just hardships in life and being able to use your music as an outlet uh, for escaping. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that. Thanks. Now, I have a question particularly for Bree. You had a radio show here yes, at Brave New Radio. A uh, little bit of anecdotal uh, experience. I actually came here for a tour my senior year of high school, and you were at the radio station oh my doing God. that tour. <laughs> so it's, it's come full circle now. It, and I just, I just it really <laughs> has. It's really yeah. weird. I had a lot of people reach out to me today being like, oh, good luck, and say hi to this person, that person for me. And I'm just like, I, I can't, they can't even say. Like, I came in, ran into the studio, wanted to say hi to Al, say hi to Rob and, and Rob Meyer. So, yeah, it's come full circle for me particularly. Um, it's really weird to be back right. I, I kind of feel like I'm still a student but I'm not <laughs> like I graduated four years ago but yeah no. that's awesome I'm glad that I was actually a part of that and it's full circle for you too then because you're sitting here interviewing me then that's yeah no and it, that's it's, cool. it's really really cool I just want to ask like how has that played into your experience in making music and in this band as well oh boy well <laughs> Well, I actually wanted to be a music major when I came here. I ended up going into journalism and production. And as much as I loved my radio show and everybody that listened to it loved it, I know I have people that are listening to it now and even ask students that were here, I always still had this pull to make music. I would be sitting in that studio on a Tuesday night listening to like Metallica, Aerosmith, whatever I was playing on air. And I was always like, I want to be the one on the radio. I want to be the one in that room with those people like I want to be the interviewee not the interviewer not just the kind of like not the bystander but in there and it really was kind of almost like kind of going back to Sarah's point of this phoenix rising out of the ashes like I'm not going to get into the whole story of how I ended up in the communications department and everything but it was basically like I did not give up and there were so many things so many setbacks so many obstacles still rose up out of the ashes for it. So it was basically this resilience and drive to just never give up and wanting to just always be involved in music. So. Yeah. 
I mean, you're saying mm -hmm. how your resilience is kind of your uh, driving force in this. Would you say that that was one of your biggest inspirations in writing your music as well? Yes. <laughs> yeah, actually, there's a song that I wrote recently. Uh, we're not playing it in the set tonight. It's still too new, but recently went through something that really pushed me down, and I was like, oh, my gosh. It, it was just a really rough thing. And I wrote this song, and I looked at it, and I'm like, eh, this is like bargaining in a nutshell. <laughs> but there are other songs that we've written. Actually, we wrote a song called Phoenix that we wrote about an experience that we had where we didn't have a, we had a gig that d ended up not happening and it was also like we're just going to keep going we're going to keep driving through that's yeah. awesome so. i love that well we're excited to hear your guys um perform tonight don't move because after the break raising arizona is going to rock the house and take us home as we close out our 13th annual braveathon stay tuned Braveathon is in full effect. We're almost done, guys. We're gonna have um, we're gonna have some music playing in the background. When we come back, we're gonna go to um, an actual live performance from Raising Arizona. Stay tuned.
But you can dip your feet Every once in a little
This is 88.7 Brave New Radio. This is our 13th annual Braveathon. It has been 11 long hours, 11, ta- well, 10 talents, actually. And now we will be going back down to Studio A for our, for our final um, talent raising Arizona number 11. I hope you all enjoyed it. This is Annie on 88.7 Brave New Radio. Braveathon. I'm Anthony Walker. And I'm Aria Capria. Whether you're listening on your radio, your phone, or watching on your TVs, we hope you have the volume up high. To end our, out another great live music celebration, please give it up for Raising Arizona. She's a happy-go-lucky girl Just taking on the world She doesn't take no for an answer now I don't blame her Always on the move She's got no time to lose You better let her go She's a happy-go-lucky way No matter the day Taking on the world by its reins. She goes faster, faster, faster than the speed of light and on a desert sky. She burns brighter, brighter, brighter than the sun over the sky. She's a happy-go-lucky girl Owning her own world You can try to push her down But she don't make a sound Just taking on the world By its reins She goes faster, faster
want to say thank you uh, for having us. We are so excited to be sharing our originals for the first time, all of these originals together. It's a really exciting time. So we want to just thank you guys for having us so much. And thank you for everybody watching and listening. Myself, I never do it again. After all is said and done again, you broke me down for your own gain. But I keep losing this game. My walls are They're here to stay because of you Come with me You're always on the run Always gone when we've just begun You're never looking back You're never coming back You take a chance on her but you never took a chance on me
All right, this next one we just wrote, rec I just wrote it recently. Um, it was based off of an Evanescence song. If you guys like Evanescence, I love Evanescence. I think she's amazing. Um, and it is called Fathom.
Thank you. That was fathom. This next one is also a recently uh, a newer song that Mr. Zach over there, <laughs> he wrote it. And I should mention Chance is our second song, our lovely other guitarist, Bree, wrote that. Um, but this one is called Without a Trace. Between my mind and my heart Alone and I watch it fall apart Not a day goes by Where I don't think of yesterday I finally found the right words to say Without a trace I stand here Trying to put the pieces back together But I can't make this last forever I can change my attempt I tell him the truth, but it's all a lie. I'll drown in my goodbye. This last one is actually available on Spotify, or it's on Spotify. Uh, it's called Record Machine. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you guys so much. We are raising Arizona. It was awesome playing with you guys, and we hope you have a great night. Uh, give it up one more time for Raising Arizona, ladies and gentlemen. Helping us close out the 13th annual Braveathon. Uh, this is the part where we do like a nice hurrah. So can everybody, all the students, come and let's let's celebrate and cheer. Woo! Yes, come on, guys. Woo! Come on now. Woo! Come on, everybody get in here. Get in here. Hey, thank you so much. Why are, come on, Raymond, what are you doing? Hey. All right. Are we all here? If there's people in the control room, let's do this. Come on. Thank you so much for watching. Again, Raising Arizona. Is that everybody before we start? Alex, come on. Lock your camera. Come on, Alex. Alex! All right. 
What's up, everybody? My name is Von Leek. I am the program director of 88.7 Brave Unit Radio and the president of WPTV. Again, I'd like to thank Raising Arizona for coming out tonight. As well as the 10 other amazing, incredible bands that helped kick off and make our 13th annual brave happen. So give a round of applause for all of them. Yeah. This is a fun fact. Back in 2009, Bravathon started as a live music, uh, no, I don't even say that. It's not, it wasn't a live music marathon. It was an event that happened in the lobby of our small radio station right upstairs. Um, was it the first or the second Bravathon that uh, a little band known as the Lumineers performed? It was the very first, and now they're playing uh, places that, you know, we have to pay hundreds of dollars to, to, uh, for tickets to get into. But that's the point of what uh, Bravathon is about, championing local and lesser known artists and a little over 13 years, COVID did some things. Uh, we're still making that happen today. So I want to thank every single body, every single person that makes that happen because from us, the students, the faculty, including uh, local camp community members, as well as the bands and artists that perform here because Jersey has an amazing local music scene. It's an event that people continue to uh, look forward to every single year. So thank you to everybody that helps make Ravathon happen. Just to mention some names, I'd like to thank Dr. Michelle Cascardi for her endless support. She's the chair of the communication department. I'd like to thank the general manager of our beloved radio station, Brave New Radio, uh, Rob Taylor. The chief engineer of Brave New Radio, Mark Sakharov. Rob Meyer and all of the tech team who have helped make today and every day leading up to, the, to today happen. Give it up for them. TSW. I'd like to give a special shout out to the heart and soul of WPTV, Al Clark. None, none of what happens today or anything that happens at WPTV would happen without him. He is the lifeblood of this place. He's what helps and keeps us, you know, functioning. Um, and like we've mentioned all day, you can continue to watch a lot of the things that we do for WPTV uh, every single week on this same YouTube channel. Um, I'd also like to thank the entire TV Club crew for staying here since 8.30 a.m. to make this damn show happen. It wouldn't happen without all of us. Mm -hmm. Some more shout outs. Uh, the amazing owner personalities that you've heard from 88.7 Brave New Radio. You're all amazing. Mm -hmm. Nick Wilkerson, Hubba Sam, and the entire promotions team for feeding us, getting us sponsors. Thank you to all the sponsors, too. Thank you for making all that happen, promotions. We would not have a show today uh, that includes these live music, uh, live artists if it wasn't for our amazing music team, Brianna, Kaylee, Ben, and the music team. Thank you guys. <laughs> to the person who helped build all the beautiful graphics you have seen today, as well as do so many other things behind the scene and be the first person to step in when somebody at the radio station said they need help. Maura, thank you, and your visual marketing team. <laughs> Thank you to the e-board of WPTV. None of this is uh, 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 possible without you guys. Thank you. Isabel, Mark Brandt, Robin Snyder, Anthony Walker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The assistant program director of Brave New Radio, Bella Roca. Where's she at? It's all, it's all you next year. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Uh, I think that's all the thank yous, but before we go, uh, so if you're watching Brave New Radio, our legal station name is WPSC, uh, but, uh, Jesus Christ, WPSC became the station that you love and know today as Brave New Radio back in 2008 when a guy by the name of Dr. Rob Quick came and changed the culture of the place. Dr. Rob Quick did something that nobody at WPSC had ever done before, he made it about the students. He fought long and hard, fought people that were uh, his bosses, fought people that he was in charge of, or that he was in charge of, and made Brave New Radio the place that you know it to love and be today. Um, he, uh, 16 years, he's never once failed uh, to deliver the message that it's all about the students and that we make college radio possible. He is so generous and cares about his students so much and college radio so much that he made a damn holiday for it. And it's now celebrated over, in over 600 uh, schools, countries worldwide. It's World College Radio Day. So, World College Radio Day. Now, in the 16 years that Dr. Rob Quick has been here at William Patterson, he has 
been a professor. He's been the general manager of Brave New Radio. He's been the chair of the WPCOM department. He has created World College Radio Day, Vinylthon. He has visited Italy to visit the home of radio. He has taken students like one of the members of Raising Arizona to Puerto Rico four or five times um, and helped build a radio station there and aid with the aftermath of Hurricane Maria. He has won two Marconi Awards as the general, man uh, general manager of Brave New Radio, won over 20 IBS awards, which are national awards that the students win under his leadership. He's been to DC, he's been on Howard Stern to talk about College Radio Day. He's been on Elvis Duran in the Morning Show to talk about College Radio Day. He started the Dead Podcast Society. He is a busy man who gets it done. And a lot of us in this building uh, were just informed a couple days ago that after 16 years, Dr. Rob Quick is leaving William Patterson. Dr. Rob Quick is um, a, another person in this building who you see and you just absolutely smile. He's never once not had a smile on his face. He's never once tried to, he's never once not tried to crack a joke to make you smile. And he is a lot of the reason that all of us here today uh, continue to do the things that we do as a professor, like I said, as a chair. He was a chair when I was here as a former general manager. And when he stepped down as being the Brave New Radio general manager back in 2021, once again, the culture shifted. So I have no idea what's going to happen in a couple weeks when he leaves this school. However, Dr. Rob Quick is on to bigger and better things. And so we want to say a big thank you. I think a thank you is an understatement, but a thank you to Dr. Rob Quick for all of his hard work and everything he's done here at William Patterson University. Dr. Rob Quick is off camera, and I know he's going to be upset with me later because I'm making him come on camera, but we're going to welcome Dr. Rob Quick on stage right now. Um, I'm sort of, I'm filming this, so this is kind of weird. Um, what Switch do do? it to selfie mode. Yeah, how do I do that? <laughs> Switch it to selfie mode. Yes, please. Yes, please. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you. Wow. Um, okay. Um, I just wish you guys had just made an effort today. Yeah. Lazy sods, all of you. <laughs> so lazy. You know? You know? Um, thank you so much. I just, I just want to say uh, thank you so much for those kind of words, Vaughn. Um, uh, you've been here a long time and you've seen it, uh, seen it all. And, and you guys, um, to continue this tradition, uh, what a it's an exhausting day, but it's a fun day, right? Yes. And it's an exhilarating day. And thank you to the bands that play. Uh, it's been an honor and a privilege. And it's been genuine, genuine fun. When we do these things together, it's fun. And you guys are going to make friendships that will last you the rest of your lives, I'm sure of it. So these are the good times, these are the good memories, and it's been a, a privilege for me to play a part in all of this. So as I say, where I come from, if there's one word to sum it all up, that word is cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Thank you. to Dr. Rob Quick, uh, people that are standing here, people that are not standing here, um, people that I hope mean a lot to you, we all got you a gift as a, I guess, a parting gift, but to, to show a t token of our appreciation for all the things that you've done in your 16 years well, here. Thank you very much. Should I, should I, uh... Yes, please. Open it. Open it. Open it. Open it. Can I just toss this like yep, dramatically? Yep, go ahead. Dramatic toss. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. What's this say? <sighs> the students, I'm choked up. The students of William Patterson uh, congratulate and thank Dr. Rob Quick in appreciation for 16 years of endless dedication and contributions to the students of William Patterson. You got me. You got me real good. Good. <laughs> good. Thank you very much, everyone. Mm -hmm. Thank you very yes. much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So with all that being said, I didn't think it made any sense to end this brave -a with the same guy it started with. So once again, thank you for you at watching at home. Thank you to everybody who's helped make brave -a what it has become today. Most of us will see you next year. And until then, from Brave New Radio and WPTV, I'm Von Leek. Have a great night.
WPTV William Patterson Television How do they do that? This week on WPTV Tuesday at 12.30 we are having a Bravathon info meeting Both radio and TV members must attend Followed by a production of Very Late Avant Lake at 1 On Thursday at 12 we will be setting up for Bravathon Come help if you're available And Friday Bravathon is here Crew call is at 8.30 This week on WP Sports Desk, the guys break down what the softball team needs to do in their upcoming Big N Jack matchup against Stockton. This is a huge matchup. Pioneers need to at least split in this matchup. If they do sweep, they'll be able to move up to fourth in the N Jack. And I think they can, you know, they match up very evenly with Stockton when you look at it. So the Pioneers, they really got to lock in tomorrow. The NHL crew breaks down the latest of the playoffs in the first round. Kane's going to have it, shoot, deflecting by Chris Kreider, and that is what he does best. Every single time he's there on the power play, standing in front of the net, shielding the goalie and deflecting the puck in. Finally, first time ever, brand new mock draft for the first round of the NFL. Great man-to-man -man player. That's really his game. Super fast, twitchy, and a really good run defender as well. That and more right here on WPTV. Very Late with Vaughn League was nominated for Best Comedy Program, Best Talk Program, and Best Variety Program. But we only won Best Variety, so if you want something funny, you're watching the wrong show. Mm -hmm. Go somewhere else. Hi, I'm Caleb Watson, the future host of The Caleb Watson Show, and you are watching WPTV. This Sunday, come on down to Hamilton Studios to see the joke thrashing of a lifetime. Call your doctor and tell him you're going to need an operation because FNN is going to bisect your sides and obliterate your funny bone. And if you're still hungry for more pain, follow us at FNNWPTV on Instagram. Oh, yeah. How do they do that? This week on WPTV, Tuesday at 12.30, we are having a Bravathon info meeting. Both radio and TV members must attend, followed by a production of Very Late Avant Lake at 1. On Thursday at 12, we will be setting up for Bravathon. Come help if you're available. And Friday, Bravathon is here. Crew call is at 8.30. You are watching WGTV.
award-winning college television. The following is a presentation of William Patterson University Television, WPTV. Welcome back to the desk. I cannot believe I'm saying this. We're in our final three episodes of the school year. Hard to believe. Our time's coming to an end, Joe. Really it's, it's really hard to believe. We got a loaded episode here with you today. My name is Jimmy Patton. Alongside me is Andrew Balistrieri with some Pioneer softball and baseball. Joe Monroy with the NHL playoffs. Can't wait for that one. And Mark Brandt with a very special NFL first round mock draft. That should be very fun. Balistrieri, Talk to me about Pioneer Sports. Yeah, man, it has been a big week for the Pioneer softball team. They get a sweep on Tuesday against Montclair, so we'll show you that game. Three home runs in that game, as well as this weekend, biggest series of the year, a doubleheader against Stockton tomorrow. Big time and Jack playoff implications in those games. As well as Steve Yellen, we've got ourselves a baby Barry Bonds right here in Wayne, New Jersey. Steve Yellen absolutely crushing it right now. We'll talk about his season so far as well as the Pioneers taking on Montclair today. They lost yesterday, hoping to get a win today. We'll break it all down for you. Yeah, no, it's going to be a lot of fun. Me and you are on the call for that right after we're done with Absolutely. the show today. Gotta so run, man. Going to be a lot run. of speed run in this one. Joe, NHL playoffs, the skates are live. Talk to me. Yeah, listen, Jimmy, it's a huge playoff so far this year. Triple treat from the Metro Islanders, Devils, Rangers, all made the playoffs this year. We're going to break down the series for them. Trouble in the sixth, the Toronto Maple Leafs trying to really get out of a struggle to advance past the first round this year in this year's playoffs. How about looking for shooting stars? Every year there's all a bunch of guys that come out and stand out for their team. We're going to break down who are some guys to watch out for this year. And 16 teams, one Stanley Cup. Who will win the Stanley Cup this year in 2023? You know, a lot of great teams looking up to hoist the Stanley. But from Stanley to Mark, the NFL draft, baby. Talk to me. Uh, I mean, it's the 2023 NFL draft season. Six days away. I'm excited. We're going to do a 16-team mock draft. No trades, going to keep it easy. Up to the Washington Commanders pick, starting with the Carolina Panthers. I'm excited. I'm ready to do a mock draft. You know, I've never been done before on sports this before. We got some, got some new, new graphics to kind of tease a little bit. Mark, you worked very, very hard with that. So, going to be a loaded episode today. But stick with us as we throw our first pitch and start out our day with Pioneer Baseball and Softball, only here on WPTV. The following is a presentation of William Patterson University Television. Welcome back to the desk. The Pioneer softball and baseball teams are heading to their final stretch of the season. And here to break it down with me of Andrew Balistrieri, Anthony Walker, Andrew Gavin, and the wonderful Mikey McElroy. So, oh, so wonderful. Oh, oh so you. wonderful. He's lovely. Andrew Balistrieri, the Pioneers, you know, three home runs on Tuesday in a doubleheader against Montclair State. Picked up two big W's in the end, Jack. Talk to me through this one. What did you see from the games? Yeah, we'll take a look at the stats from game two in this one. But the Pioneers, you have mentioned it, three home runs. Carla McDaniel, Anna Nunziato, Caitlin Monahan all go deep. Pioneers win game two, nine to one. You know, you see the hits, ten hits to four hits. No errors for the Pioneers, three extra base hits. And you see Montclair just continue to leave players on base. Pioneers now sitting fifth in the NJAC after this win. Now just six NJAC games left. This sweep helped them a lot. And... You know, they got some big games coming up, so this one means a lot to them, absolutely. Yeah, the grad students really came to play against the Red Hawks. That was definitely big time hitting from those three. Andrew Gavin, what did you see from this contest? I mean, it was all around great hitting and fielding and a dominant outing from Jalen Miller Tuesday. Yeah, no, Jalen Miller definitely been holding it down on the mound all season long. We talked a lot about her last week. Anthony Walker. Talk to me about this doubleheader. Pioneers need to sweep a big time. They got great pitching performances from Lila Guthy and Jalen Miller, as, as Gavin mentioned. And this is a really, really big sweep for them. You know, big time sweep. And this is what we've kind of been asking for, big time hitting in NJAC competitions. Kind of been inconsistent at times. It helps a lot this time. It really helps in the standings. Mikey, close us out with question number one, the Red Hawks games. What did you see? I mean, Jalen Miller pitched in both games, 8.2 innings. Two earned runs only. Caitlin Monahan, Carly McDaniel combined for seven RBIs. You can't go wrong. Yeah, no, definitely can't go wrong with that winning formula. But, Mikey, I'm going to keep things with you. Tomorrow, the Pioneers, what could have been their biggest doubleheader of the year so far against Stockton, you know, they got coming up. What should we expect in these games? I mean, you would expect that you keep the pitching because they've got dangerous hitters on Stockton. Uh, they have a slew of hitters hitting over 300. 
Charlie Chachowski and Lily James both with four home runs each. So it's a danger, but I think the Pioneers pitching staff can handle it. You know, definitely going to be a big test. Walker? Yeah, uh, Stockton's loaded with talent, but they do have flaws. They have five, or six players, rather, hitting over 300, and five players with at least two plus home runs, three players with at least three plus home runs. You know, definitely a lot of power. The big key is going to be keeping it in the ballpark. Andrew Gavin. Uh, you know, Trump has a sub two year right and can really dominate. She has 10 complete games. We talked about Willie James, talked about Charlie, Charlie Chachowski. You just got to keep the game how they've been playing, small ball, and, ex and when big plays can happen, take advantage. I know, absolutely. That was right. I mean, this is a huge matchup. The Pioneers need to at least split in this matchup. If they do sweep, they'll be able to move up to fourth in the end, Jack. And I think they can. You know, they match up very evenly with Stockton when you look at it. Same, uh, Narina Tramp, she's been amazing. 78 strikeouts in her 84 innings pitch. So the Pioneers, they really got to lock in tomorrow. Yeah, really matched up pretty well against Manhattanville. Very good out-of-conference team, even though they didn't bring either one of those wins home, but definitely a close contest. They can keep kind of that momentum with that, those games in Montclair State. It could be very positive moving forward for the softball team. But from the softball team or to Jeff Albee's field and the baseball team, Anthony, I'm going to start out with you. We talked a lot about some studs on the softball teams, but, I mean, Steve Yellen is shining bright over for the Pioneers. Just broke the all-time career RBIs in William Patterson baseball history. Talking about his season, what you've seen from him lately. Yeah, we're going to take a look at the stats here for Steve Yellen. And I feel like we talk about Steve Yellen all the time. But you know what? He's just that good. We cannot talk about him. Look at these numbers. 457 batting average, an OPS of 1402, 30, 55 RBIs, 10 home runs. I mean, he's just someone that we talk about when we say it can't get any better than this. And then it gets better than this. And he's been... So impressive for the Pioneers over the past five years. Andrew? Yeah, I mean, he's absolutely crushing it. He's tearing the cover off of that thing. And he's, you know, he's really, he's brought life back into this lineup. It seems so stale for a while there. And he's just really just revived this entire team. Uh, now he's got 10 home runs. He's second in the end, Jack. And listen, man, these Pioneers, they're going to need him to continue on this tear uh, to end the season if they, if they want to make a run. You know, we'd love to see him stay hot like he was last year in the end, Jack tournament. Big piece uh, bringing home that conference title. But... You know, Mike McElroy, what have you seen from Steve Yellen? He's a man among boys. That's what it comes down to. I mean, you know, you got a dangerous lineup around him anyway, but, I mean, he just shines brighter than anyone. And he's a catcher, no less. You know, a lot of times catchers aren't, like, the best hitter on a team, but I can't, no one can argue those numbers. Yeah, he can do it defensively, too. We've seen the hose that Steve Yellen has, throwing guys out at second, picking guys off, sleeping, getting too far off the base. But, Andrew Gavin, what have you seen from Steve Yellen? I mean, everything and he's not just a strikeout and home run kind of guy he can put the bat on the ball he has Colin Lombardo in front of him uh, uh Colin Lombardo in front of him he has Steve then it's Steve Young he has protection and he can hit the ball far and wow yeah he can move around the lineup really anywhere he even really made a really really made a spot in that two hole this season we've seen him hitting the four the three the five I mean you can really put him anywhere coach Lauderhand definitely a versatile hitter all around the order but you know we're gonna see Steve see Steve Yellen today Montclair State's coming to town. Going to be a big-time match of Route 46. I cannot wait. Andrew Gavin, I'll keep it with you. What's, can the Pioneers bring home a win today? Pioneers absolutely can bring a, a win home here. And we take a look here at the team comparison. They have Sam Angelo, Ryan McKenna, who are great hitters. The record 19-11, 18-9. Batting average, very similar. The ERA, William Patterson has a very high ERA, but if they can attack these pitchers and go against this bullpen, they can have a great outing. Mikey, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think we're due for a Darmani Rivas start, and uh, he's a veteran guy that I think will keep the runs down for this packed lineup that we have. Uh, if they can just hit like they normally can and he can keep it down to like two, three runs, I think uh, they have a good chance of winning it in this important end jack game. Yeah, Montclair State, one of the few teams that can kind of match the Pioneers as far as hitting. We saw their average in the 330s. Anthony? Yeah, no, I'm, you know, Montclair... Is a very good team, but they do have flaws, just like any other team. And, you know, they always play the Pioneers tough, you know. Every time there's, you hear that term, Route 46 rivalry, Montclair will come to play, William Patterson comes to play, and both teams really, really want to, you know, get bragging rights over the other team. So it should be a good game today. Yeah, definitely Pioneers want to even up the split. Did not play so well in their last contest against Montclair State. Going to look to bounce back today. Andrew, what do you need to see to make that happen? Yeah, it was a really tough game yesterday. The bats weren't able to get going. They left a lot of guys on base, and, you know, they had quite a few errors. So they're going to have to clean up uh, a little bit today. And they got to watch out for Sam Angelo because he's batting over 400. He's got nine home runs. He hit one against him yesterday. So got to watch out for him and got to clean some things up, but they definitely can win today. Yeah, definitely a big threat. I cannot wait to be on the call for you with that. It's going to be a lot of fun. We got a nice day for it outside nice as well. Day. So very it's going nice. to be a, a fun Friday rivalry matchup. We wish the Pioneers good luck in their big weekend and matchup today. 
But now it's time. The NHL playoffs are upon us. Keep with us here on WPTV as we throw it over to Joe and the guys. The following is a presentation of William Patterson University Television, WPTV. Welcome back to the desk. After a very surprising regular season, the NHL playoffs are finally here. Here to break it all down with me, we have Joe, Anthony, Mikey, and Andrew. You know, Anthony, obviously being an Islanders fan, they've got a big series against the, the Hurricanes currently. Not off to the best of starts, but it's fun to see all three local teams in the playoffs. Talk to me about it. Yeah, well, Joe, the producer of this lovely block, is going to torture me by making me call uh, the Islanders game from the other night. We're going to take a look at those numbers, and we're going to take a look at these, this video right here. Brock Nelson with a breakaway, shoots and scores with 10 minutes left in the third period. They get out to that 3-2 lead. They come back from down to nothing. I'm sitting there doing a radio show saying, Islanders are going to win this game. Nope, two minutes later, uh... Hurricane scored to tie the game at three. That's Jakob Slavic, who is scoring right there to tie at three. No one would score in the rest of the third period. So we go to overtime uh, in the NHL playoffs, as you may know, in the overtime, full 20-minute periods uh, in the playoffs. And here is uh, Jesper Faust scoring to make it a 4-3 game, a, a, a skate-off winner for the, uh, for the uh, Hurricanes. They win. They make it 2-0 in the series. Islanders need to step up. They need Bo Horvath to score, and they need to win the next two games at home if they want a chance. Yeah, going to be a really tall order to come back in that series. Mikey, what do the Islanders need to do? Um, well, they got to get to Auntie Renta. Um, Anders Lee and Jean-Gabriel Peugeot are people that I think need to step up. They have 100 points on the season combined, and... You know, obviously they're not doing the playoffs right now, but they're only scoring four goals in these games. Yeah, definitely going to be interesting this series potentially come back. And Hurricanes, one of the bigger threats in the NHL. It'll be a nice upset for the Islanders if they can make that happen. But from one New York team to two other local ones facing against each other, the New York Rangers, New Jersey Devils. Andrew, I know you're very passionate. Got a lot of feelings in this series. Take me through it. Uh, Rangers are up 2-0 in the series. As we take a look at the highlights last night, we're going to see Hollis score right there. And we take a closer look right here at the deflection, the loose puck behind Shesterkin. How is going to tip that in? That'll make the game 1 nothing, but not so fast, my friend. Tarasenko is going to get the pass here from Fox. He's going to wrist shot right there. And that is going to tie the game up at 1. Then we're going to get another goal on the power play. And this is going to be fantastic as we take another look here. Kane's going to have it. Shoot, deflecting by Chris Kreider. And that is what he does best. Every single time he's there on the power play, standing in front of the net, shielding the goalie and deflecting the puck in. And that is what the Rangers are known for. And another Chris Kreider goal. He has three, four power play goals in this series. And that is one of the bigger reasons why the Rangers are winning. And their forecheck has been just unstoppable. Same with the power play and the penalty kill as the Devils only have one shot on goal on the power play. Yeah, and the Rangers are going home now. The chance to potentially sweep up 2-0 going back to MSG. Joe, your Devils disappointing you a little bit. Can they come back? Yeah, listen, they had a great regular season, but it's been it's going to be really tough. I mean, you're playing game three at the Garden now. You, didn't, you It would have been nice to get at least one at the Rock, but tough atmosphere to play at the Garden, even though you beat the Rangers in the regular season. You won that series. But listen, Adam Fox, six assists now for the Rangers in two games as well. The power play unit has been absolute killer for New Jersey Devils. They have been absolutely... It's really, you know, really disgusting to look at. They went 0 for 4 as well in the power play yesterday, and it's been really disappointing for Devils. And, and Rangers' playoff experience is really showing against this young Devils team. Yeah, definitely an experience showing a little bit. Obviously, they're technically on the road to going to MSG, but you know, New Jersey Devils fans can obviously travel to the Garden potentially. So maybe the home ice will even out a little bit more so than what the Rangers are used to in their building. But to switch things over, one team that's kind of disappointing in the Devils. One team that's historically disappointed is the Toronto Maple Leafs. Andrew Gavin, what do they need to do to kind of have some more success in these playoffs? Turnovers. Turnovers along the boards, turnovers in the open ice. They cannot control the puck. They've been freezing in center ice, turning the puck over. The forecheck is awful. They cannot control the puck. And, you know, the Buffalo Sabres haven't been in the playoffs in 15 years. They have, a, they have won. They have gone past the first round before the Maple Leafs have in the past, like, 25 years. It's sad. Mikey? I mean, certainly, uh, I just saw this one stat and just how they are in closeout games. Uh, one and eight in cl six and seven games. They don't close out any games they play, and they have a core four of Matthews, Marner, Tavares, and Nylander, and they just don't come up in big situations. They're great in the regular season, and then they just don't put it together in the playoffs. You know, they definitely have time to do it, though. Looked pretty good in the most recent game against the Lightning. Anthony, talk about the Maple Leafs. Yeah, their big ticket players need to step up. Mikey just touched on it recently. You know, Austin Matthews, John Tavares, 
Tavares had a big game to even the series up at one against the Lightning. They need more of that from the Maple Leafs. They need more of that from him. They need more of that from Matthews. And if they do that, they should be able to break this drought. Yeah, it's a good one-two punch with Tavares and Matthews. Former Islander John Tavares. Definitely remember when he was with them. Joe. Yeah, listen, right off the bat, it's the penalty kill unit. This is a team that hasn't won a playoff series since 2004, and they made the playoffs five, six straight times. It's a very disappointing to be a Toronto Maple Leafs fan, but right off the bat, they're going to lose the series if they, cannot, if they can't keep themselves out the box because Tampa, they're scoring off the power play with Headman, Braden Point, and also Nikhil, and Nikhil Kucherov as well. So it's going to be a tough one for the Maple Leafs if they can't stay out the box. Yeah, we know the experience that the Lightning have built up over the last number of years, winning multiple Stanley Cups, so obviously a big test for a team that has struggled like the Maple Leafs. But for teams to have success, you got to have stars shine. you got to have breakout-type players. Mikey, who's a player in these playoffs that you look to make a big difference for, these, for one of their teams? Well, it's got to be David Pasternak. Um, he's on the best team in the NHL. Uh, they, I think they had 13 more wins than the next closest team. In the playoffs so far, he has one goal in two games. Um, he averages over a point a game in his playoff career. And, you know, arguably he's a top three guy in the NHL. And he's on the best team, so you got to imagine he's going to get things done for his team. Andrew, who's your stand-up player? Mine's going to be Jack Eichel. I mean, he's been a star for so long. He was stuck in Buffalo for so long. Got out of there last year. He was in Vegas. Had the back injury. First time in the playoffs, he's stepping up. Two games in, he has two goals. His plus-minus is negative three, but, you know, they split right now with the Jets. Uh, yeah, with the Jets. And, you know, a big thing going forward now is seeing how he can perform. He's been a star for so long in his career. It's kind of been amazing. You know, they've been in the league for a while now, the Golden Knights. But since being an expansion team, the amount of success that they've actually had, it's kind of crazy. Anthony. Yeah, I'm going to go with Drew Pinch. He had a hat trick the other night uh, against Minnesota, even the series up at one apiece. Two games, four goals, assist, five points, and a plus and my, plus minus of zero. He's had a great, great start to the postseason so far. Look for him to keep it going. Joe, who's your stud? I'm going to go for the Carolina Hurricane, Sebastian Ajo. Listen. His stats might be showing not, not too little too much, you know, eye catching the playoffs, but listen, two games got one goal, one assist, two points, and also one plus minus. But listen, he's a guy who's filling in the spot right now for Andre Savenskinov, who towards ACL is a big loss for the Carolina Hurricanes this year. And he's been filling up that road really well. He had a great regular season stats as well for the Carolina Hurricanes. Yeah, no, definitely a great regular season for them. I can't wait for the rest of these playoffs. First round been very exciting. But we are in the first round. Obviously, you got to have some, got some early predictions for who's going to hoist the coveted Stanley Cup. So, Joe, I'll keep things with you. A lot of teams are in contention. Who do you like to bring home? Well, listen, they're tied right now 1-1 the series against the Florida Panthers. But I'm going to Boston Bruins. They came out and showered seven goals in the first game of the series. They've broken almost a lot of records. The combination of Olmark and Sway made in the goalie position. Um, the guys, Marshall and Bergeron, acquiring Bertuzzi from Detroit was absolutely huge. Uh, Paul Zaka has been having an electrifying season since he came from the Devils to them. And this team can do it all, and I can't see them with a historical regular season not winning the, winning the Stanley Cup at all. And if they don't win, it's a huge disappointment. Yeah, if they don't win, you took the words out of their mouth, a huge disappointment. That regular season, almost it, almost meaningless. So, Anthony, who you got? Let's see if I can work some reverse jinx magic here. The Carolina Hurricanes will win the Stanley Cup. They have a great, great team behind them with a lot of talent there uh, behind Sebastian Ajo, Ajo, who Joe just talked about, Brent Burns, and Antti Ranta in net, who Mike talked about earlier. I mean, I think, that, I think they're going to sweep the Islanders, wink, wink. And I think they're, they have the best chance out of anyone here to really go the distance. I know you definitely don't want that to happen. No, it's not. It, no, yeah, I, I, yeah, I mean. But it's a good pick. You, <laughs> you, you, you and Nick Hirsch on our united front, one of our, lovely, yeah. one of our lovely professors. Absolutely. Hand in hand. Mikey, where are we going? The Oilers are blessed with the best player in the NHL, and Connor McDavid. They got another star in Leon Dreisaitl. And, uh, you know, they've had role players step up in their last win, Derek Ryan and Clem Costin. You know, they stepped up, and if they can do that with the best player in the NHL, they're going to be Listen, having that cup. And they had, the, they had Connor McDavid for a very long time. They've been such a affiliate organization. It's really embarrassing to see how low the talents they are. Leah Dressel, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Nurse, Storch Skinner at the goal position. It's so disappointing how they haven't won a Stanley Cup yet. It is disappointing, but it's hard to win in the NHL, obviously. One player can only do so much throughout a whole series. Gavin, close this out. I'm not trying to sound like a shill when I say this. The Rangers have a great opportunity. The Hurricanes, we dominated the Hurricanes in the regular season, beat them three times, lost them only once. The Bruins are looking a little sluggish right now. They have injuries right now. And the Rangers last year, they cracked the surface. Going to the Eastern Conference Final, going against the Lightning, yeah, I don't want to talk about what happened there. But, hey, this opened the Stanley Cup window, and I think it's a great opportunity. And we have a lot of veteran experience with Kane, with Tarasenko, with Kreider, as he's been there, and he's been in the playoffs when he lost to the Kings in 2014. We know what it has to take, and everybody knows in the playoffs, especially hockey, it is a completely different game, and experience matters. It's faster, it's quicker, it's more tough. 
you know, experienced managers a lot have a lot more than they did last season from what their additions and just from who they're bringing back. And obviously, Igor Shosturkin, a great equalizer at the goaltender position. That's all we have for you with the NHL. Stick with us as we skate things over. Hit a slap shot to Mark and the NFL crew, the 2023 NHL mock draft. Cannot wait for that. Stick with us on WP Sports Desk. The following is a presentation of William Patterson University Television. Welcome back to the desk. We are one week away from the NFL draft. And we've got some first round standouts alongside me on the desk. Naming them off, we got Mark, Joe, Mikey, and Trent. And you know, guys, this is a very special block. It's WP Sports Desk, I'm afraid to say, is on the clock. And Trent, we're going to start off with you. Mock draft, first 16 picks of the NFL draft. Who are the Carolina Panthers taking with the first overall selection? With the first pick, i got to say it's quarterback out of Ohio State, C.J. Stroud. It could be any of these four quarterbacks going first, but I believe it's C.J. Stroud because compared to all the other four quarterbacks, C.J. Stroud is the most ready for the NFL, having more experience than Richardson and a better build than Bryce Young. So I think that... Josh McCown is going to love him in his quarterback room. Yeah, definitely going to be an interesting potential pick to match with Frank Reich over now in Carolina. Mikey, going left to right, you are the number second selection, the Houston Texans. I don't think they're trading for Trey Lance. Um, you know, I don't think height matters. I know Trent mentioned it. You know, I don't care about the small frame. You got Russell Wilson, you got Drew Brees, Kyler Murray, all under six foot. Great. He throws the ball, gets it out of his hands quick. And he's really creative as an athlete. He's not going to you know, outrun guys at the NFL level, but he's going to make plays. And I think he's just ready for it. Yeah, Bryce Young definitely going to be a potentially electric player if he can stay healthy. Joe, number three. Well, if they keep this number three, I'm going with Alabama's Will Anderson. He's probably one of the top edge rushers in this year's draft list. And last year, 140 total pressure, 20 sacks over the past two seasons. Excuse me. And Will Anderson is just a guy to be a difference maker on that Arizona defensive unit. Yeah, no, definitely. Potentially was thought as being the number one overall pick for a while, Will Anderson. Alabama defenders always well-polished coming into the NFL. Mark, the Indianapolis Colts, what do they need? Yeah, so they need a quarterback, right? And I'm going to go with someone that you're very familiar with, and Anthony Richardson, the quarterback out of Florida, 6'4", 244 pounds, an electric playmaker with both his arm and his legs. You know, Shane Steichen from the Eagles is going to want a quarterback that can open up the offense, super athletic, and Richardson fits that bill. I really think that... At the age of 21, he has all the potential in the world, and he's exactly what the Colts need right now. Yeah, definitely would be very interesting. Haven't had any success since Andrew Luck's departure. Trent, going to wrap it back around to you, the Seattle Seahawks. Well, Seattle needs an edge rusher. If Will Anderson's off the board, I say they take Tyree Wilson next. He's got a big frame, fully athletic. I think he's going to do great things with Pete Carroll. He's the perfect coach for him. Very interesting. There we're still a quarterback remaining on the board, so I guess you don't have... Don't have Will Levis going to Seattle. Potentially, that could be interesting. Mikey, you're on the clock. Lions don't need a quarterback, I'll tell you that. They need a running back in Bajon Robinson. He is an absolute animal. 5'11", 215. He dominated college defenses, and he's going to dominate at the NFL level. I know you don't want to take a running back high, but they got to go all in on offense. They have a good quarterback, good receivers. Might as well just go all in. Yeah, very difficult. Very interesting the way running backs work now, drafting one. Uh, in the first round. Not always the premium selection, but he is one of the most talented we've seen come out of the draft for a long time. Joe, the Raiders, who we got? Yeah, listen, the setup here, this guy's still available on the board. I'm going with Jalen Carter, Georgia. This guy, listen, is 6'3", 214 pounds, a massive player, very talented, very explosive, huge, dominated this season as well, part of that Georgia National Championship team. Listen, Vegas could use a guy like him, a difference maker on, the, on that defensive front, pair him up next to Max Crosby. They, they probably have a good chance to really stop the run this year. Yeah, best probably player on that Georgia National Championship defense, and that's a tall order considering how much talent is there over there with Kirby Smart. Mark, your second pick, eighth yeah. overall. Yeah, so I've got the Falcons here, and I don't know how he's still on the board, but Christian Gonzalez, the cornerback out of Oregon, six foot one, 197 pounds, great man-to-man -man player. That's really his game. Super fast, twitchy, and a really good run defender as well. And you can re really never have too many good corners. You know, they just traded for Jeff Okuda. But getting a guy in there who's younger, he has all the potential in the world. And I think it's a great pick for the Falcons there. You know, Falcons definitely a terrible roster, but definitely got some holes in it. And NFC South can be very wide open. A pick yeah. like that could definitely help out. Trent, we are back to you. So for the ninth pick, I have Lucas Van Ness going to the Chicago Bears. Many would say they need a left tackle, but I think 
Braxton Jones has had a really solid season his rookie year, so they're going to need a lot more help on defense, and Lucas Van Ness is a guy who could play edge rusher and on the interior line, so he gives a lot of depth to a defense that really needs it. Yeah, it feels like Iowa, there's always like one player on Iowa each and every year that kind of stands out, you know, whether it's like a TJ Hawkinson, seems like there's always guys from Usually Iowa. Usually on the line. Pro produce good, some way. good players. Yeah. Yeah. Like Produces them. good products. Mikey, we're in double digits for picks. Who we got for the Eagles? Hey, speaking of line, uh, Peter Skaronsky is going to go to the Eagles, I think. Um, he's really versatile. I know he's listed as a tackle, but, you know, you could see him shifting the guard, yeah. even center if you really needed it, but that's not going to happen. But with Kelsey and Lane Johnson aging, you got to shore up that line. you got to protect Jalen Hurts. He just went to a Super Bowl. Shore up your line. Get things ready. Good pick that they traded for from New Orleans. Yeah, definitely. The Eagles' offensive line, one of the most feared in football, I mean, a pick like that would only add to it. That depth would just keep going. Joe, pick 11, where I believe our Tennessee Titans are on the board. Yeah, listen, the Titans, he's probably one of the top receivers coming out of Boston College. Zay Flowers might be a little bit of a stretch of a pick, but also could be a rich pick at number 11 for Tennessee as well. Listen, this is a guy who's very competitive, put out huge numbers. He put 200 catches, over 2,000 yards, 31 touchdowns at Boston College this year. And listen, they still have a quarterback at Ryan Tannehill. They lost A.J. Brown when, he went to, when they traded him to the Eagles. Listen, he could be a guy who could be uh, in, their, like, two, in, in their receiver slot guy type of style for, the, for their offense. Yeah, just drafted Traylon Burks out of Arkansas. D not really sure if he's the number one yet, so that pick kind of that two young receivers that they end up keeping Derrick Henry. The Titans offense could maybe make some noise potentially. Mark, where are we going next? Yeah, so Texans here at 12. You know, the division rival just took a receiver. I'm going to take a receiver here in Jackson Smith and Jigba. Probably the best receiver in the draft. Instant starting slot receiver. Can really create mismatches there. An exceptional route runner. And he can really take on a role as a volume pass catcher. And that's really what the Texans need, especially if they do end up getting Bryce Young like Mikey thinks. Yeah, if they get that quarterback pairing, whether it's Bryce Young or C.J. Stroud, potentially if maybe Stroud would have faulted to, and you compare Pair those two up with college yeah. teammates, kind of like a new Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase type of trend. But Trent, with a couple of receivers falling off the board, what is your next selection? I got to say, my New York Jets t at pick 13 pick Broderick Jones, a left tackle. Now, this guy, he's got one of the best motors in the draft, and he's a real angry run blocker. It's just what the Jets needs for their offense, and if he needs to develop, he could develop behind Dwayne Brown for a year. Quite frankly, he's the perfect pick for the Jets at this position. Yeah, I know that that would make you very, very happy, Trent. <laughs> very happy. Talking about it for a while between on, the, on this desk and radio. Yes. So it's going <laughs> to be interesting. I know you'll be glued for that Jets pick. But, Mikey, from the Jets to the Pats, where are the Jets' rivals going in this draft? Well, you know, there's a lot of quarterbacks, a lot of receivers that have gone already. So you got to go defensive back in Devin Witherspoon. I don't think he's as good as, as, good as Gonzalez. But, uh, you know, he's a hard-hitting, aggressive player, really good in zone, and Bill Belichick loves guys like that. He's going to make him a really good player. Yeah, no, anytime Bill, Bill Belichick, the Patriots, draft a defensive player in the first round, they kind of think, like, oh, that guy's going to be a stud with Bill Belichick uh, being the head coach. But from one perennial playoff team to another, Joe, the Packers coming off a down year. Where do you think they're going to go in this first round? And listen, there's a lot of great tight ends in this year's draft. This is my favorite position, too, because I played this position. But I'm going with Don Kincaid. Listen, there's also Michael Mayer. There's also Luke Musgrave. There are also Darnell Washington. But Kincaid, 70 passes, 800, 890 yards. Listen, this is a guy who's a perfect fit for Green Bay, in my opinion, because the way how I see it, he's a guy who has premium hands, can have contested catch ability. He's also super athletic in space. You can also space him out as well. And at this point for Jordan Love, this is a great, a great guy to have pair him up with. He's very... Very amusing the year Aaron Rodgers leaves so the Packers would draft a pass catcher. That would be very funny. But, Mark, you know, we said we we're doing first 16 picks. That only means one thing. Everyone's made their four selections. You are last. Who is your last draft pick? Yeah, so I've got the commanders here with our last pick in this mock draft. And I'm going Paris Johnson Jr. from Ohio State. Offensive tackle might not be the sexiest of picks, but you really need a guy who you can develop into your cornerstone left tackle. And Paris Johnson can be just that. He can play both tackle positions, super young with high potential. And if Sam Howell really is the guy they think that he could be, protect him. Get Paris Johnson Jr. there. Develop him alongside with Sam Howell. Yeah, I don't know how sold I am on Sam Howe overall in Washington, but definitely a talented roster, more so on the defensive side. They definitely have pieces in play. But 16 picks up, 16 picks down. Gentlemen, I cannot wait for the NFL draft next week. should be a lot of fun. But that will be all we have for you today on WP Sports Desk. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at SportsDeskWP for updates and more. Join us in two weeks as we are off next week for Bravathon. We'd like to give a special thank you to all of our cast and crew and the wonderful studio manager of the tallest man in the room, Al Clark. From Studio B in Hamilton Hall and for everyone at the desk, I'm Jimmy Patton, and we'll see you next time. 
This is WPTV. William Patterson. Television. How do they do that? This week on WPTV, Tuesday at 12.30, we are having a Bravathon info meeting. Both radio and TV members must attend, followed by a production of Very Late Avant Lake at 1. On Thursday at 12, we will be setting up for Bravathon. Come help if you're available. And Friday, Bravathon is here. Crew call is at 8.30. This week on WP Sports Desk, the guys break down what the softball team needs to do in their upcoming Big N Jack matchup against Stockton. This is a huge matchup. Pioneers need to at least split in this matchup. If they do sweep, they'll be able to move up to fourth in the N Jack. And I think they can, you know, they match up very evenly with Stockton when you look at it. So the Pioneers, they really got to lock in tomorrow. The NHL crew breaks down the latest of the playoffs in the first round. Kane's going to have it shoot deflected by Chris Kreider, and that is what he does best. Every single time he's there on the power play, standing in front of the net, shielding the goalie and deflecting the puck in. Finally, first time ever, brand new mock draft for the first round of the NFL. Great man-to-man -man player. That's really his game. Super fast, twitchy, and a really good run defender as well. That and more right here on WPTV. Very Late with Vaughn League was nominated for Best Comedy Program, Best Talk Program, and Best Variety Program. But we only won Best Variety, so if you want something funny, you're watching the wrong show. Mm -hmm. Go somewhere else. Hi, I'm Caleb Watson, the future host of The Caleb Watson Show, and you are watching WPTV. This Sunday, come on down to Hamilton Studios to see the joke thrashing of a lifetime. Call your doctor and tell him you're going to need an operation because FNN is going to bisect your sides and obliterate your funny bone. And if you're still hungry for more pain, follow us at FNNWPTV on Instagram. Oh, yeah. How, how, how do they do that? This week on WPTV, Tuesday at 12.30, we are having a Bravathon info meeting. Both radio and TV members must attend, followed by a production of Very Late Avant League at 1. On Thursday at 12, we will be setting up for Bravathon. Come help if you're available. And Friday, Bravathon is here. Crew call is at 8.30. You are watching WGTV, award-winning college television. You are watching WGTV, award-winning college television. Tonight, we're celebrating one year of very late. Wieners are getting robbed in Vegas. Isabel's taking over Women's History Month. And, oh, did I mention we're an award-winning show now? We've got so much to celebrate, so let's get into it. This is Very Late with Vaunt Leak. Woo! <laughs> Thank you so much. Ah, people, I love it. I want to touch all of your faces. Thank you so much. Welcome to Very Late. I'm Vaunt Leek. And if I look a little different, it's because I lost a few pounds. <laughs> Good one. And my mustache grew too. Yeah, well, one of those statements is true. No, if I look a little bit different, it's actually because I gained weight. The weight of three national awards on my back. Come on! Come on! Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That was for Mark Brent. Thank you, man. Best program director, best owner personality, best variety in the country, baby. And yeah. you're just, just variety. Just variety. Yeah. You'll get them next year. <laughs> anyway, like I said, this is very late. I'm Vaunt Leek, and over there is my sidekick and best friend, Isabel. Isabel, hey. Best. You have a best friend named Isabel? Where is she? I was referring to you. <laughs> you think we're friends? <laughs> I don't think that's an. I don't think that's an unfair assumption. You wish. Okay, well, there's so much going on, so let's see what's happening. First off, we have to talk about this Chris Rock special. He did a live Netflix show where he finally addressed getting slapped by Will Smith at the Oscars last year. Let me start by saying Chris Rock getting bitch slapped on TV and then waiting a year to gain profit on it is genius. We should try that. I'm out here. Whoa. Uh -oh. oh, wow. Wow. Keep my wife's name out your mouth. Oh, 
In the Netflix special, Chris Rock said the reason he didn't fight back is because he has parents and he was actually raised. Which I don't get, because if I walked into my mom's house after getting slapped, she'd tell me to take my black ass outside and fight back. <laughs> and then I'd probably get whooped for not fighting back. I keep, like, messing with my shirt. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm supposed to be fasting for Lent, but I feel like if I breathe anymore, I'm going to pop. Or, or you could just think I started going to the gym, whichever one you decide to choose to listen to. Don't I look muscular? Eh. David Hasselhoff type beat? Eh. I'm going to start doing the, the rock, the nipple thing. <laughs> That's uh, okay. <laughs> no? Please spare us. <laughs> Everybody's talking about Cocaine Bear, the new movie about a bear that goes on a wild coke rampage. Meanwhile, I just can't believe it took him this long to do a documentary about Charlie Sheen. In other news, after 17 years, the Rachel Ray show is ending. In a related news, working men have reported an increase in terrible meals that their wives, who only have one job, have been making. One job? That's so insensitive. My bad, Isabel. I'm sorry. You're right. I, I, I shouldn't have said that. Yeah, we clean too. <laughs> you ever heard of sazon? Adobo? Sofrito? Any of those? Lowry's? Fabuloso? <laughs> no, no Fabuloso. <laughs> <laughs> just saying things now. Uh, Isabel makes a mean casserole, I'll tell you. <laughs> hey, well, since we're on the topic, March is Women's History Month. So, Isabel, do you want to tell a joke? Oh, this is such an honor. Uh, okay. Don't get used to it. <laughs> Haley Bieber has been keeping an eye out for Selena lately. Okay, never mind. That's enough. You're done. Usually, I never say never, but after that, Isabel, I take it back. You make me so mad. I'm going to lose my marbles. I can't. I, I can't keep my hands to myself. I'm going to beat your ass. You're not going to beat my ass. Why are you so violent? God damn. Actually, you know what, Isabel? I can't work under these conditions anymore. I can't believe I'm stuck with you. We can fight. When you're ready, come and get it. Nah, 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 nah. Uh, and what do you mean? Actually, you know what? I don't care. I don't care. I'm sorry. You need to learn to love yourself or else you're going to be pretty lonely. Huh. Tell me something I don't know. And scene. <laughs> Good one, Isabel. Just kidding. A Dallas journalist was fired for calling the mayor bra on Twitter. In other news, a guy talked about grabbing women by the pussy and he became the president. Uh, last month, thieves in Las Vegas stole the catalytic converter from the famous Oscar Mayer Wienermobile. Here to comment is the driver of the Wienermobile. Uh, how are you, sir? Feeling weenie. Oh, okay. Uh, you want to tell us what happened on the scene? Am I supposed to improv this? Yes, we, talked, oh, we discussed <laughs> this in, in the meeting. So tell us about, tell us, okay. This is, this is what won Best Variety, ladies and gentlemen. My wiener, I, I pumped the gas twice and the wiener just busted. Oh, no. Okay, well, can you tell us about why would anybody want to steal the catalytic converter from your wiener? Well, it's big, it's hard, it moves fast. It's just, it's just tough all the way around. Right, and I'm sure you just got the oil changed, so your, ev your engine is revving. Well, I put it in the greaser, I got it all revved up, fired up, got a little, got a little greasy on it, got a feel, feeling frisky, uh -huh. you know, slid right in between those buns, Yeah. got right in there with that hot dog, uh -huh. put some must mustard, some ketchup. Relish? Oh, I relished every second. Okay. <laughs> now, have you guys have any leads on who stole the catalytic converter from your wiener? Uh, I'm not sure, but whoever they said stole it, they felt like they got 1% bigger every day. Oh, jeez. All right. Well, we'll check in with you again later. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Moving on, Tennessee Governor Bill Lee is banning drag shows in the state because they're apparently inappropriate for children. But a photo surfaced recently of him in high school dressed as a woman. And a lot of states are actually banning things that affect real communities lately. Tennessee's banning drag shows, pushing LGBTQ plus people back in the closet. Florida's banning critical race theory, which only perpetuates racism. And worst of all, New Jersey is banning unflushable baby wipes. <laughs> How's Chris Christie going to wipe his ass now? Good luck. A new report from NPR says that people who think they are attractive are less likely to wear masks. Yeah, here. Take one of these. I don't... Why are you trying to give me a mask? Um, because you're spreading ugly like it's disease. I don't need a mask, Isabel. What are you talking about? Masks don't prevent COVID. We interrupt this program to bring you breaking news. Vaunt leak, anti-masker, more at 11. We have an amazing show for you tonight. We just want IBS, baby. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back in a second. You are watching WGTV. Award-winning college television. Woo! Thank you for 
tuning in. This is Very Late with Von Leek, and this episode means a lot. First of all, I just want to say today marks one year since we started this show on WPTV. Make some noise. Come on. <laughs> clap for me. Look at this guy. Oh, man. His beard has not aged a day. <sighs> Such a shame. Look, you have no idea what it takes for us to do this show. Um, long nights, very late nights. A lot of bugging Nick Wilkerson to come to the writers' meetings. But from the bottom of my heart, to everyone who has sewed into it, from the crew, to the writers, the producers, the viewers, social media followers, the lovers, the haters, and especially Country Calvin, I sincerely appreciate you all. Um, you know, we have a couple episodes of this show to go before President Hell Zobler tries to lay me off, so let's keep doing what we're doing and being great. Woo! Yippee! <laughs> In other news, <laughs> let's keep it celebrating going because Very Late with Vaughn League was just named Best College Variety Program in the country! Clap again! Come on! Yay! Give it to me! Give it to me! And stop. <laughs> Love it. Isabel, we did it! Hooray! <laughs> Friendship. So much variety. Right. <laughs> Not a lot of comedy. We were nominated for Best Comedy Program, Best Variety Program, Best Talk Program. We won. Best Variety Program. Um, I guess we don't talk or are funny enough. Yeah, we're not good talkers <laughs> and we're not good comedians, but we're very, we're very various. So, <laughs> um, that was a great moment, and I think, like I said, I mean, I already said it. I'm not gonna do it again, but thank you, straight from the bottom of my heart, uh, for coming every time that you do to the show. <laughs> why do you have to see? <laughs> this is why we didn't win Best Comedy. Any words? Do you want to give a you want to give a speech? Uh, Have you been part of pa a pageant? Isabel's Isabel's wearing a dress and her neck is out. So much so much variety yeah, happening I, I felt, today. You know, we won the award, so I had to add variety to my outfits. And I feel like the first place to start is showing my neck. Oh. Um, and now people can kill me easier. So <laughs> you'll be killed easy regardless. So you don't need your your neck. I'm not too much neck. No respect. <laughs> Do you want to actually say something about we won? Oh, yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> Talk about your damn neck. Like, we put in <laughs> a lot of work for this show, and it means a lot for it to be recognized. So it's thank you. <sighs> Isabel was so upset we didn't win Best Comedy. <laughs> uh, I'm going to put a picture. There's a picture of <laughs> Isabel when we, she saw her face when we lost Best Comedy. But we're here. We have a trophy under our name, so can't tell us shit. And since we're celebrating so much, uh, I've been told, and this is, this is real, I swear to God, I've been told we have some video messages from some people who want to say congratulations to us. Isabel and I, and I, I swear to God, like, this is 100% true. Isabel Aww. can put her hand on the Bible. Isabel and I have not watched these videos at all. So people have some things they want to say. So let's see. Let's take a look. Hi, Isabel. Congratulations, Bounce. Congratulations. Oh. Congratulations, Vaughn. The IBS wins. Shout out to the Very Late crew for winning the best variety program for IBS. Happy one year of Very Late. Hey, Vaughn and Isabel. Congratulations on winning Best Variety Program. Hey, Vaughn and Isabel, congratulations on your fifth anniversary. This is very... It's not the fifth? Okay. Sorry. Congratulations on your third anniversary. It's really impressive that you've been able to put... Mm, is this the first? This is just your first anniversary? Oh, well, you don't really get anything for that, although with your generation, you're used to getting a prize. So congratulations on your first <laughs> Why you anniversary of your show. But you know what? You? It's not really that big of a deal. It's just one year. <laughs> but is, it, is this really what we send you to college for? <laughs> very lame with Vaught Lee has won IBS. Very late, very late. <clears throat> Excuse me. It should be an Isabel show. But you know you got it. Thank you for having me on that show and winning Best Variety Program. Because obviously, if it wasn't for me, I don't know if you guys will win that, to be honest. Wow. Because your host is just, he's bad. They won Best Comedy, which is kind of funny, seeing as you're such a huge joke. Almost <laughs> as big of a joke as our relationship. What were the judges thinking? Were they like IMing on their phones when the reels were running? Best Variety Program. Not Best Comedy. Late night. <laughs> it's me. You're from a producer, head writer, showrunner, Floor manager, you know, basically the human slave you worked to death to get this award. Um, <laughs> congratulations, I guess. The beard, a very comedic, very comedic touch. Love looking at that thing, love laughing at it every day. We all know that if I would have stayed on as sidekick, <laughs> we would have won best comedy program. <laughs> and to be honest with you, I'm not surprised that you guys lost to KJHK. It just, <laughs> they just seem like the better school. And to be honest, Isabel, I think you should transfer there. We know you try to be funny, um, so. These are the people we lost to. 
Yeah, sorry man, like... Yeah, I mean like... Uh, better luck next year. I think it's last year actually. Well, good luck with your life. Have a nice <laughs> life, huh? Congratulations to the whole crew, to Al, um, to Isabel. I know how hard your job is, you know, trying to make them all funny. Congrats! I can't believe they won a fucking IBS award. Jesus, man. What did Rumor Report win too? <laughs> you said did Rumor Report win too? Oh my god. Thank you to everybody in that video. That was like, that was, those white people were Isabel's parents. That was, it was, we knew it was white my people. dad roasted us like <laughs> Your dad roasted us like hell. Is this what we said you just go for? That's right. Uh. That's comedy, though. <laughs> Thank you to every single person that uh, sent this video. We have more very little about the break, so stick around. The greatest minds in science have been working tirelessly week after week using the most cutting edge 21st century technology to perfect the greatest college TV station known to man. And today they present their latest creation, WPTV. Ooh, uh, anybody got any glue? Welcome back to Very Late. International Women's Day just passed, and although I'm all for supporting and empowering women, there's one woman around Hamilton Hall who's been taking this feminist thing a bit too seriously. It's finally Women's History Month, a time to celebrate all of the women who came before us and paved the way for future generations, and to all of those breaking the glass ceiling. Shout out to all the queens out there for breaking the glass ceiling and proving that you're better than any man. Salute to the queens. Just make sure that if you break the glass ceiling, you just clean it up afterwards. Women's History Month reminds me of all the women who came before me, like Susan B. Anthony, Rosa Parks, Gloria Steinman, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, AOC, Malala, and Kim Kardashian. I just love Women's History Month. Isabel goes crazy during Women's History Month, to the point where it kind of scares me a little bit. Women go through so much. We live lives that men will never understand. And we face everyday struggles that no one has ever faced before. Isabel, you know I'm, I'm literally black, right? For far too long have men stood at the forefront of our society. I will always believe in standing my ground as a woman. I'm so appreciative of what women do every day to defy sexism and fight for what they believe in. It smells fucking nuts. I'm here with a supervisor at work and she's okay most of the time, but when Women's History Month goes around, it's a whole different story. Hi, I'm just here to pick up some equipment. What, you think you could, just because you're a man you can boss me around? Huh? Book your own equipment. I do my best to avoid Isabel as much as possible during the month of March. Oh, hey, Vaughn. Yeah, I was just in class and he was doing way too much. Like, why would you... What's the word for, for making a situation worse? Oh, you mean exacerbate? Don't ever speak for a woman. Anyway, how was your day? Look, something comes over her during the month of March, and frankly, we're all worried about her. This is really not the Isabel that we usually see. All right, ready to take three and take three. Don't tell me what to do. You think just because you're a man, you can tell me what to do? No, I think if I'm the director, I can tell you what to do. Take three as well now, please. Uh, and the director, why does it have to be a man? Who made that decision? Isabel, we're just gonna miss, we just missed the shot, Isabel. I'm not gonna take camera three if I don't want to. I'm, a f I'm free to make my own decisions. 
about my own body. I'm on the news team here at the radio station. Isabel's the news director. I'm all for women in leadership positions, but I think this is starting to get out of hand. No, no men in BNR News. It's Women's History Month. But I don't understand. You just hired me. And you'll never understand what it's like to be a woman. But... I'm the head of the Feminist Society on campus, and to be honest, Isabella's setting us back years. Her rhetoric is outdated and was created during a time when the feminist movement was solely focused on cisgendered white women. It's very regressive. I can't wait for this month to be over. Like, I know I went a little crazy for Black History Month, but Isabella's doing too much. I'm always reminded of the powerful women in my life who inspire me to do my best during Women's History Month. I wouldn't be who I am today without them. We can look up to celebrities and historical figures, but no one will understand the women experience more than the women in your life. I think we should celebrate Women's History Month not just in March, but every day. Happy Women's History Month, ladies. Happy. We've got more do you know how much women have suffered? Like, we barely even have rights now. Like, it, literally I, throughout history, people have been doing things throughout the entirety. Okay. We've like, got more very late you, coming up, so stick around. I don't know. I can't believe, about, like, why would you do this? I don't, I, this is WPTV. William Patterson. Television. Welcome back to Very Late with Vaught Leak. The trailer for the live action Peter Pan and Wendy movie came out recently, and a lot of people are upset that Tinkerbell is being played by the beautiful black queen Yara Shahidi. In a related story, M&M's decided to replace their spokes candy mascots with Maya Rudolph to fit a more dynamic and progressive world, and Tucker Carlson had some words to say about it. M&M's will not be satisfied until every last cartoon character is deeply unappealing and totally androgynous, until the moment you wouldn't want to have a drink with any one of them. That's the goal. When you're totally turned off, we've achieved equity. They've won. Conservatives are just so upset that we want to include people. And Tucker Carlson is upset that he can't get turned on by the green M&M anymore. Well, I mean, can you blame him? Have you seen the new purple M&M? Her eyelashes? Flaky. The green M&M bought a new pair of Pumas so that she could be a girl on the go. And conservatives want to keep her in her place wearing uncomfortable high-heeled boots. We all know that the real reason they want to keep green in her boots is so that she'll be forced to be uncomfortable and won't be able to achieve her dreams, so she'll just have to stay in her place as a housewife to the red guy. Isabel's wearing green. I think that's a little... I think you're taking a little personal, sweetie. Uh, you can say what you want. I'm glad they took the stilettos off the brown M&M. Miss Brown knows she's a cougar. That extra inch of high heel always got me going. Oof. Talk about looking like a snack. Brown is black, and black don't crack. Mm. With Tinkerbell and the live-action Little Mermaid, conservatives are upset that mythological creatures are being recasted as a different race. Suddenly, everyone's a scientist saying the Little Mermaid can't be black because the sun doesn't reach the bottom of the ocean. The last time I checked, mermaids aren't real, and conservatives have been arguing against science since the pandemic started. Wait, wait, but what do you have against black fairies and mermaids? Well, nothing. They're just fictional. Well, who says it's fictional? Michael Phelps set the bar for black swimmers and for everybody who thinks black people can't swim. Maybe Halle Bailey just wanted part of her world to be the one that breaks that generational curse. The same thing with Black Tinkerbell. But what's the issue with the black fairy? Black women are the first people to be looked down on, kept down actually. Just let Shawty spread her wings and fly for once. We've been oppressed for years, and now you're gonna tell me that a black woman in the ocean and a crab can't be best friends? People weren't upset about Will Smith playing the genie in Aladdin, and he's blue. And for whatever reason, people haven't said much about Peter Pan being recast as a person of color in this new movie, but Maybe it's because the original Peter Pan was a ginger. And in every performance of Peter Pan, he's played by a woman. But now Peter Pan can't be performed in Tennessee because of the drag ban. Well, there goes RuPaul's chances of being in the live-action uh, Princess and the Frog movie. 
We've been making new movies and shows like this for a year, changing out genders of characters. Now they're just changing race. They did Ghostbusters, Ocean's Eleven, How I Met Your Father. All of those were great, by the way. I'm waiting for the premiere of Two and a Half Women. Yeah, right. Women don't get enough credit for the shit we go through. Like, it's low-key disrespectful that they think we could be half of anything. All right, Isabel. Let's move on. And let's talk about the most progressive and inclusive change they've made in the past couple of years. Getting rid of the gender of the potato heads. When I was younger, my mom only had enough money to buy one. And because I didn't want my friends to call me gay, I just bought Mr. Potato Head. But wouldn't wanting the guy make you gay because you didn't want the girl? Yeah, but forming a bond with Mr. Potato Head allowed me to understand what having a single father relationship was like. See, Isabel, black kids like me get stereotyped for living in single family households with their moms because their dad was out buying milk. And because Mr. Potato Head and I had such a strong relationship, I really just ended up growing up thinking that I was gay because I had a dad. Okay. Uh, when it comes to Potato Head, I just really don't understand why conservatives are so upset. Like, were you as an adult playing with Mr. Potato Head? And, like, no one was taking your Potato Head away either. No one's even forcing you to buy a gender-neutral Potato Head. That's like when gay marriage was legalized and people were worried that they were going to be forced to get gay married. Maybe Mr. Potato Head wanted to wear a flower hat, but Slinky and Bo Peep were going to call him a bitch if he did. Now, Potato Head is free to express themselves as they have wanted to for years. Yeah, Isabel! And... While we're on the subject, IHOP turning into the International House of Burgers, best decision that they could have ever made for the company? No. Uh, my point is that no one was asking for a gender-neutral potato head or for the M&Ms to change their shoes. They were asking for representation. People want to see characters that represent who they see in themselves. Real representation is creating new, unique characters that share the experiences of real people. And all of this is really just companies trying to get a trying to keep making a profit and taking attention away from real issues because race swapping a fictional character isn't going to stop racism and an M&M wearing sneakers isn't going to stop sexism. Whoa, so <laughs> you're telling me that you were okay when they made Lola Bunny's boobs smaller in the new Space Jam movie? No, I was pissed. Th that's what I thought. That's all for very late this week. I want to thank everyone who said congrats to us, the people at IBS, Where's our trophy? And of course, Al Clark and the entire crew. One year of the best variety show in the country. Got a couple more of these left. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time. Until then, that's our show. Good night. This is WPTV. William Patterson. Television. How do they do that? This week on WPTV, Tuesday at 12.30, we are having a Bravathon info meeting. Both radio and TV members must attend, followed by a production of Very Late Avant Lake at 1. On Thursday at 12, we will be setting up for Bravathon. Come help if you're available. And Friday, Bravathon is here. Crew call is at 8.30. This week on WP Sports Desk, the guys break down what the softball team needs to do in their upcoming Big and Jack matchup against Stockton. This is a huge matchup. Pioneers need to at least split in this matchup. If they do sweep, they'll be able to move up to fourth in the end Jack. And I think they can. You know, they match up very evenly with Stockton when you look at it. So the Pioneers, they really got to lock in tomorrow. The NHL crew breaks down the latest of the playoffs in the first round. Kane's going to have it shoot deflected by Chris Kreider, and that is what he does best. Every single time he's there on the power play, standing in front of the net, shielding the goalie and deflecting the puck in. Finally, first time ever, brand new mock draft for the first round of the NFL. Great man-to-man -man player. That's really his game. Super fast, twitchy, and a really good run defender as well. That and more right here on WPTV. Very Late with Vaughn League was nominated for Best Comedy Program, Best Talk Program, and Best Variety Program. But we only won Best Variety, so if you want something funny, you're watching the wrong show. Mm -hmm. Go somewhere else. Hi, I'm Caleb Watson, the future host of The Caleb Watson Show, and you are watching WPTV. This Sunday, come on down to Hamilton Studios to see the joke thrashing of a lifetime. Call your doctor and tell him you're gonna need an operation because FNN is gonna bisect your sides and obliterate your funny bone. And if you're still hungry for more pain, follow us at FNNWPTV on Instagram. Oh yeah! How do they do that? This week on WPTV, 
Tuesday at 12.30, we are having a Bravathon info meeting. Both radio and TV members must attend, followed by a production of Very Late Avant Lake at 1. On Thursday at 12, we will be setting up for Bravathon. Come help if you're available! And Friday, Bravathon is here. Crew call is at 8.30. You are watching WPTV, award-winning college television. The following is a presentation of William Patterson University Television. Hello and welcome back to the Fake News Network, where 2 plus 2 equals 5, and we have always been at war with Eurasia. I'm Hanna Kuzolo. And I'm Slugma. Our main story tonight, we have a very serious interview with a hunger correspondent, and our interviewer royally fucks up. More on that later, but hey, first, psst, come here. I gotta tell you something. It's Han's birthday today. He doesn't know it yet, but the whole studio has prepared a little surprise for him at the end. Think you can keep it a secret, pal? All right, let's get back to it. Anyways, on to our rapid news. Expect inclement weather with a big dose of irony this winter. Local indoor ski resort Big Snow has been set ablaze. Looks like skiers aren't the only thing going downhill. Mr. Beast has claimed responsibility via tweet for the arson incident as a promotional stunt for his new line of Mr. Beast burgers with extra jar. Trademark. If you or a loved one have video evidence of you catching fire, Mr. Beast himself will personally send you $2,000 cash. Whether it's reward or hush money is left up to interpretation. The American dream up in flames over burgers. Can't get more obvious than that. Harvardian molecular gastronomists have finished their decades-old study regarding the deal with airplane food. Funded by Big Seinfeld, the 36-page study tests over 300 different types of food across a multitude of airlines. This includes Delta, Spirit, and Jet Purple. The study came up inconclusive as it would discover that airplanes don't have taste buds. In order to make the study not a complete waste of time, their next endeavor is human-to-plane taste bud transplants, which they view as very promising. Your tax dollars at work, ladies and gentlemen. In collaboration with Bed Bath & Beyond, Brita has announced that it will be offering free experimental surgery to attach a Brita filter to your liver and kidneys. The filter has been tested to absorb as much as 40 liters of pure ethanol to the horror of every frat in the nation. Now you can enjoy your favorite White Claw, Jello Shot, and famous William Patterson drink, the Moldy Dorm, without that pesky buzz getting in the way. One recipient of the surgery claimed, I used to enjoy frat parties, but after my British surgery, <laughs> when asked about filter maintenance at a press conference, British spokesperson Evelyn Clear said, I don't know. If this sounds like your idea of a good time, you could schedule a surgery by contacting the Beyond Hotline of your local Bed Bath & Beyond. And now, talking about my weird Aunt Sally, it... This just in, there's a bear in the control room! A bear? Get down! <laughs> this is WPTV. William Patterson. Television. How do they do that? This week on WPTV, Tuesday at 12.30, we are having a Bravathon info meeting. Both radio and TV members must attend, followed by a production of Very Late Avant League at 1. On Thursday at 12, we will be setting up for Bravathon. Come help if you're available. And Friday, Bravathon is here. Crew call is at 8.30.
This week on WP Sports Desk, the guys break down what the softball team needs to do in their upcoming Big N Jack matchup against Stockton. This is a huge matchup. Pioneers need to at least split in this matchup. If they do sweep, they'll be able to move up to fourth in the N Jack. And I think they can, you know, they match up very evenly with Stockton when you look at it. So the Pioneers, they really got to lock in tomorrow. The NHL crew breaks down the latest of the playoffs in the first round. Kane's going to have it shoot deflecting by Chris Kreider, and that is what he does best every single time he's there on the power play, standing in front of the net, shielding the goalie, and deflecting the puck in. Finally, first time ever, brand new mock draft for the first round of the NFL. Great man-to-man player. That's really his game. Super fast, twitchy, and a really good run defender as well. That and more right here on WPTV. Very Late with Vaughn League was nominated for Best Comedy Program, Best Talk Program, and Best Variety Program. But we only won Best Variety, so if you want something funny, you're watching the wrong show. Mm -hmm. Go somewhere else. Hi, I'm Caleb Washington, the future host of The Caleb Washington Show, and you are watching WPTV. This Sunday, come on down to Hamilton Studios to see the joke thrashing of a lifetime. Call your doctor and tell him you're going to need an operation because FNN is going to bisect your sides and obliterate your funny bone. And if you're still hungry for more pain, follow us at FNNWPTV on Instagram. Oh, yeah. How do they do that? This week on WPTV, Tuesday at 12.30, we are having a Brave Without Info meeting. Both radio and TV members must attend, followed by a production of Very Late Avant League at 1. On Thursday at 12, we will be setting up for Brave Without. Come help if you're available. And Friday, Brave Without is here. Crew call is at 8.30. You are watching WPTV, award-winning college television. You are watching William Patterson University Television. Welcome to Common Hour Comedy Hour, guys. Hi, I'm Elaine, and I had a really interesting high school experience. Um, it was just interesting because I always had a couple nicknames. The ones that always stood out to me, though, were, um, well, lesbian and uh, bok choy. Um, <laughs> lots of people thought I was Asian, so they decided to name me uh, a Chinese cabbage. And honestly, it was kind of funny, except for the fact that my Chinese friend was the one that came up with it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, I thought we were on the same team, but I guess it's okay that I'll get bullied and you won't. <laughs> and the craziest part is that he wasn't being racist to another Asian person, but that I'm not Asian. <laughs> like, how is the kid that's the typical Chinese American with the parents who own a Chinese restaurant coming for me, like, you're in the back doing homework. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> I'm actually Colombian and Dominican, though, and usually when I say that, people kind of go like, whoa, you're exotic. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm really just off-brand Mexican to a lot of you guys. It's okay. But yeah, I was in my acting class the other day, and my teacher asked my ethnicity, and I mean, she's white, so white people do that. <laughs> And I tell her and cue the wow. <laughs> and yeah, it gets a, a bit weird for me sometimes because especially white people, no, no hate, but they always say, I know another one of you guys. I know another one. <laughs> it's like, do you know Sofia Vergara? I'm like, maybe. <laughs> like me. Uh, they're like, can you believe there's another one of them? And I'm like, okay. Um, and yeah, she was calling over her other friend, like, Kathleen, come, come, you gotta check this out, it's a new one, a new one! <laughs> and I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's cute, though, because I know they're trying so hard not to be racist. Comes off as racist, though. But <laughs> so back to the acting class, there's another girl next to me, my friend, and she asked her as well, and she's like, I'm Peruvian, and she's like, 
Uh, it's not that special. <laughs> you're just Mexican, really. <laughs> like, you're all short and tan. Like It doesn't really matter. But then she goes, but I was born in Peru. I'm like, why would you say that when I had the spotlight on me? <laughs> like, you did that on purpose. You really did that on purpose. Yeah, that's what it's like being ethnically ambiguous, guys. So thank you. Thank you. Ah, the sea turtle. So beautiful, so majestic, and they carry their home around with them, isn't that cute? However, she cannot compare to the greatest thing nature has given us. That, of course, is the WP TV. Mwah. Oh, I could watch that all day long. Right, Mr. Turtle? Yeah, I bet you agree, Mr. Turtle. You are watching William Patterson University Television. Let's welcome up our next comedian, Tony Ansosa. start off by saying that high school like the concept of high school is fucking crazy like just think about it you take hundreds upon hundreds of sweaty teenagers and stick them in a building for six hours like you just walk down the hallway and get absolutely assaulted with the stench of bo covered up by axe body spray <laughs> the perpetual headache you will have for the next four years is very real Anyways, um, I was kind of actually a bad kid. Well, not necessarily like, like a bad kid. I was just like really stupid. Like the middle school weird kind of hadn't completely left my body yet. So I was like, didn't really know what was socially acceptable to do. And I didn't have any friends either. Um, but one of the most embarrassing things I had done was think it was a good idea to try out for my high school's talent show. And what was my talent, you ask? Stand up. <laughs> and as bad as you were thinking that it probably was, I promise you it was 20,000 times worse. I was like, I got up there, I was a shaking, bumbling idiot. And even though I didn't realize this at the time, because I got off that stage thinking that I had, I was amazing, you know? I was like, oh my God, I'm so good, you know? They, they're just blown away by me. Yeah, so the next day, I'm sitting in class, and I get called over the PA to the principal's office. And you know, I'm, I'm walking down. I'm thinking, all right, what are they going to get me for this time? They find out that I was the one drawing dicks in all the textbooks. That's crazy. And so I get in there. It's my vice principal. I'm, I sit down in her office, and she's like, just want to start off by saying you're not in trouble. I just wanted to talk to you about your little talent show talent, you know? Well, stand up, right? I just, I just have some few lines in here that I think, that I think need to change, all right? So, so let me see. She's looking on her computer, you know. There's this one right here. Someone tell that cracked out whore to get off the stage. Yeah, this is a high school that is not acceptable here. You cannot say that here. And I'm like, excuse me? I thought this was a performing arts high school. This is my art. You are trying to silence me right now. And then she goes on to say, you know, she keeps looking. Uh, there was also another one here. Yes. Um, were these kids raised in a barn? See, we do have some students who are raised on farms, so that could be taken as offensive. So that one will also have to come out. And, you know, I thought, like, I was... I was outraged, you know. I'm like, why am I being treated like a white man on Twitter right now? Stop trying to cancel me. I don't appreciate it. And so, you know, she turns back around. She's like, you know, we do remember that this is a performing arts high school. Have you considered singing? You know, I just saw Les Mis. It's a very, very beautiful show. You know, 
because I had, re- I had really started off this interaction with the principal thinking that I was like Miss Universe or something, but it really ended up turning out more like when Steve Harvey called out the wrong name of the winner. Um, but anyways, I ended up changing my, my talent show talent to magic. You know, I uh, magically disappeared from the lineup of talent people in the show. Um, thank you so much. You are watching William Patterson University Television. Next up, like welcome Hunter Long. Hello. There we go. My name is Hunter Long, and I'm going to talk to you about my suffering in retail. <laughs> Who here has been to Trader Joe's? Yeah. Uh, it's truly a middle-aged white woman's happy place. <laughs> and you're laughing because you agree or you're seething because I called you old. Woo! So at Trader Joe's, we specialize in lying to you because it's fun. <laughs> Your average Trader Joe's employee would be fired for saying that, but not me. <laughs> I quit. Yeah, I, if you're hiring, <laughs> I am still looking. <laughs> so I, I should have noticed the red flags in the training video when they said the hierarchy for employees was an inverted pyramid. So the thing about an, a pyramid scheme is the person at the top makes the most money. Just because you tell us we're at the top doesn't mean we're making as much money. But th- that's their business model. <laughs> we're not allowed to talk about that. So, when I first did my interview, it didn't feel like it was quite going well. That is until I told them I was a soccer referee. Uh, really good with violently angry moms. <laughs> so, I, right before I start the game, I tell the kids, all right, make sure you drink your water, stay hydrated, have fun. <whistles> and then you, you just, it's quiet for a moment until, annihilate them, Tommy, Nathan, Nathan, no gold, no dinner. And then my favorite, piedoshe, piedoshe, that means fuck you in Polish. So, um, I got the job. I was at Trader Joe's, was at Trader Joe's for a quarter of my life, and that sounds like a long time, but uh, there's birds who've been alive longer than me. I'm 22 years old. Trader Joe's loves veterans. Sometimes customers, they don't ask for help, but they have their own way of communicating. (sighs) 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 Can I help you? Yeah, can you help me find the everything but the bagel seasoning? Can you let me put up my cream cheese in fucking peace? (laughs) It's it's the low-fat one. So, the shelf is full of quite literally nothing but cream cheese, but I'll still get the question, can you help me find the cream cheese? (laughs) And uh, I try to ignore it. (laughs) I I, I pretend, as I'm I'm stocking cream cheese, by the way, and she's asking (laughs) for it. And, you know, I I give in. I, uh, I stand there, I rest my face with a resting Kermit look, as I call it, just. <laughs> she thinks I didn't hear her ask one more time, could you help me find the cream cheese, sir? Here you go. <laughs> and uh, you know, she examines it. Cream cheese Karen examining the cream cheese like a crime scene. 
Uh, she looks at the expiration date. It's got like a good three weeks. And she asks, is there anything older than that? I'm putting up the oldest we've got. And I tell her that. No, this, this is all we've got. Could you just check in the back? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I head back. And um, of course, I hear, <sighs> can I help you? Yes, can you help me find the cream cheese? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming to Comedy Hour, Common Hour. WPTV, William Patterson, Television. How do they do that? This week on WPTV, Tuesday at 12.30, we are having a Bravathon info meeting. Both radio and TV members must attend, followed by a production of Very Late Avant Lake at 1. On Thursday at 12, we will be setting up for Bravathon. Come help if you're available. And Friday, Bravathon is here. Crew call is at 8.30. This week on WP Sports Desk, the guys break down what the softball team needs to do in their upcoming Big N Jack matchup against Stockton. This is a huge matchup. Pioneers need to at least split in this matchup. If they do sweep, they'll be able to move up to fourth in the N Jack. And I think they can, you know, they match up very evenly with Stockton when you look at it. So the Pioneers, they really got to lock in tomorrow. The NHL crew breaks down the latest of the playoffs in the first round. Kane's going to have it, shoot, deflecting by Chris Kreider, and that is what he does best. Every single time he's there on the power play, standing in front of the net, shielding the goalie and deflecting the puck in. Finally, first time ever, brand new mock draft for the first round of the NFL. Great man-to-man -man player. That's really his game. Super fast, twitchy, and a really good run defender as well. That and more right here on WPTV. Very Late with Vaughn League was nominated for Best Comedy Program, Best Talk Program, and Best Variety Program. But we only won Best Variety, so if you want something funny, you're watching the wrong show. Mm -hmm. Go somewhere else. Hi, I'm Caleb Washington, the future host of The Caleb Washington Show, and you're watching WPTV. This Sunday, come on down to Hamilton Studios to see the joke thrashing of a lifetime. Call your doctor and tell him you're gonna need an operation because FNN is gonna bisect your sides and obliterate your funny bone. And if you're still hungry for more pain, follow us at FNNWPTV on Instagram. Oh yeah! How do they do that? This week on WPTV, Tuesday at 12.30, we are having a Bravathon info meeting. Both radio and TV members must attend, followed by a production of Very Late Avant League at 1. On Thursday at 12, we will be setting up for Bravathon. Come help if you're available. And Friday, Bravathon is here. Crew call is at 8.30. You are watching WPTV, award-winning college television. This is WPTV. Welcome back to the desk. Your eyes do not deceive you. I am not Jimmy Patton. I'm Mark Brandt, and I will be guest hosting today's episode of WP Sports Desk. And we've got a great one in story of Andrew Balistrieri with WP Softball, Anthony Walker with WP Baseball, and Jimmy Patton with the NBA. Andrew, what's going on over at Pioneer Softball Field? Well, the Pioneers were able to bust out the brooms on Tuesday. Got a nice little sweep over Jersey City. 
So we're going to bring you some highlights from that game, break it all down for you. As well as Jalen Miller, an another amazing performance on Tuesday. She's off to a great start in her season. We'll talk about her. And then we're going to kick it off. There's about 15 games left in the season. Pioneers got to win some clutch games. We'll give you our takes on which games they must win. And then tomorrow, Pioneers head down to TCNJ to take on the Lions. We'll preview that game for you. Yeah, you know, on Tuesday they had a really good day. But, Anthony, take us to the overside. Jeff Albies, what's the latest for the WP baseball team? Mark, the Pioneers busted out the bats against Rutgers New York, beating them 19-7 will break down that win. Also, a couple of Pioneers stepping up lately, uh, you know, and not the usual suspects. So we'll talk about, you know, who other than Colin Lombardo, Steve Yellen, uh, Dan Carter, who has stepped up most for the Pioneers. Also, Pioneers went on a little bit of a skid, lost four in a row. Since then, they have won three in a row. We'll talk about what they've done to right the ship. And finally, we'll talk about the Pioneers' biggest threat if they want to make the NJAC playoffs. Yeah, a lot of matchups. Looking forward to seeing how the Pioneers do with those. But Jimmy Patton, this is weird. It is weird. It's but, been a while. Yeah. I'll see if I still got it, though. NBA playoffs are around the corner. They have arrived. We're going to talk about the playoff matchups coming up, marquee matchups, as well as MVP debate, the Joker, the process, Embiid, Nikola Jokic, which big man is going to get it. Also, if I'm an analyst, that means one thing. I'm going to argue Knicks with Andrew Balistrieri and IG Davis. That's going to be must-see. And we cannot wait, Mark. Yeah, can't wait for that either. But with 15 games remaining, we're going to throw it to Andrew and the WP softball crew. Stick with us here on WPTV. This is WPTV. Welcome back to the desk. The Nears are rolling and there's less than 15 games left. Here to break it all down is Andrew, Anthony, Jimmy, and Andrew. Pioneers took on the NJCU Gothic Knights on Tuesday and busted out the brooms. Andrew Balistrieri, take us through this one. Yeah, we'll take a look at the uh, highlights from this game. It was awesome two-game series. Pioneers get the sweep in game one. It was a great, great pitching duel. Jalen Miller was going off. Sidney Dabity of NJCU going off. As we see here, a nice steal right there by Jill Bigos. But this is what really matters. Bottom of the sixth inning, Jasmine Vera, fly ball to deep left field, hits the wall. Gets the game-winning run in right there. Pioneers win that one, one nothing. And right here, let's see a nice little wheezy web gem as she does. Pioneers win that one, one to nothing. On to game two. Pioneers absolutely routed them. An eight-run second inning. All of these runs came with two outs. Bigos had some nice hits. And right here, we're going to see Carly McDaniel have a nice one. Get two more runs in on that one. And she's able to move up to second on the bad throw but right here we see another rip into the outfield this time it's Gianna Mulatto joining the party it was a fun game for the Pioneers they take this one 11 to 1 right here we see Kylie Bythrow getting another single Pioneers they were just hitting all day and Caitlin Monahan joins the fun gets one right into the outfield to score another run Pioneers they really crushed Jersey City just like they had to do but this is play of the game Double play on the pick, the Kylie Cannon, the strikeout, getting it over to third, getting the out. And right here we see Grace Gaskill also joining in on the fun, has a two-run single and able to move on to second on the throw. And then right here, another rope into the outfield over there. A nice little cranker in Mark Brandt's eyes. Pioneers win it 11-1, 2-0 on the day. Yeah, we were on the call for that one. We had some fun. Jimmy, what did we see from the uh, sweep of NJCU there? Saw the ball get put in play. Pretty simply, Pioneers only had three strikeouts in each game. Anytime the Pioneers can keep their strikeouts down and their performance, work walks, get on base, lineups a lot more a uh, lot more depth in it than we have seen since last season. One through nine really can all put the ball in play. So if they can do that, uh, they'll be in a lot of games. Anthony? Yeah, no, I'm really happy with what I saw here from the Pioneers. You get a great pitching performance in game one. Game, t game two flies. And you know what the Pioneers do? They don't hit home runs. They are able to put the ball in the gap. They're able to put the ball down the line, get, get hits you know, put pressure on the defense and score a lot of little runs that way, which is a really refreshing play. Absolutely great game. Andrew, quickly. Pretty much what Walker said. A lot of small ball, go gap to gap, back and forth, put the ball in play. And Jalen Miller, Jalen Miller was phenomenal in game two. They're going four innings pitch, only allowing one hit. Yeah, speaking of Jalen Miller, she's been dealing all season, including, you know, the doubleheader when she came in for relief in the first game and then started the second game. It's time to give her her flowers. Jimmy, what have you seen from Miller this year? Seen absolute dominance, seen another dominance, seen another step up. We gotta look at her stats here on the season, taking a big step up even since last year in her freshman campaign. Seven and two on the season, 64 innings pitched, a 1.141 ERA and a 1.02 whip with 46 strikeouts. She's pitched 
six or more innings six times this season. She has kept the ball in the ballpark, has not let up a home run. And I mean, NJCU only allowed one hit, so really just dominant. And she's going to be a big reason why the Pioneers are going to be a threat in the NJAC later in the season. Yeah, Jim, they're certainly an impressive pitcher. Anthony, what have we seen from Miller? She's been great, and she is a staple of the bullpen, uh, of the star rotation. She is a workhorse. She leads the team in innings pitched by over 20 innings. She's been absolutely phenomenal. And then you look at the ERA, one, it's in the low ones. I mean, yeah. it's been absolutely dominant for her. And she can hit the ball, too, if she needs to. Yeah. Andrew? I mean, She's pitched 64 and two-thirds innings, and she only has a 200 batting average against her. That's basically the Mendoza line right there, and that is insane to see. Okay. Yeah, man, she's been on fire. She's solidifying herself as one of the top NJAC pitchers. I mean, the one-two punch, her and Lila Guthy, both been phenomenal. She already tied her win total from last year with seven wins. She's looking for more. Um, she's progressing great. She's, she's been exciting to watch. Yeah, I mean, only 14 games left on their schedule, and the Pioneers do have some work to do in the NJAC if they want to make the playoffs. Anthony, which of these games stands out to you the most in the final stretch here? You know, let's go right to the end. Let's go with Rutgers and Newark Pioneers play them to wrap up their season. And with how things are going, the NJAC is very tightly packed. What happens in those final games might determine who makes the NJAC playoffs, where the seeding is, everything like that. And they should be able to beat a very beatable Rutgers-Newark team. Absolutely. Andrew Gavin? Montclair State is important, as always, the Route 46 rivalry. Montclair is 17-9. Alyssa Brown and Liz Mullen batting well above 450. This team can knock the cover off the ball, and that's something to watch. Valley. i got to go with Stockton, a team that's ahead of them right now in the NJAC standings. Pioneers lost both games to them in extra innings last year, looking for some revenge. But Narina Tramp and Nicole Smith, two pitchers for Stockton, both sub-2 ERAs as well, just like the Pioneers. And they have five players hitting 300 or better. It's going to be tough games, but the Pioneers are going to have to get them. Jimmy, finally. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be the Kane Cougars for me. Pioneers faced Kane last season. They lost a combined 23-3. to Kane, only two conference wins this season, so it's a much more manageable opponent this season. If they want to compete with the top dogs of the NJAC, they're going to have to beat teams that are ranked ahead of them going into the season like Kane was. Yeah, included in this final stretch of games is a doubleheader tomorrow against TCNJ. Andrew Gavin, what are we expecting from these games? TCNJ is 59. As we took, take a look here and look at these two teams together and we take a look, the Pioneers are 18, 5, and 1, and TCNJ is 59. Batting average, TCNJ is 335, ERA 272 to William Patterson, low 169 ERA, and the whip both low for both teams. But something like to look at is Elizabeth Goose and Julia Reslessler have a combined record of 11 4, and they both have an average ERA of 212, and that is going to be insane against this Pioneer. Uh, offense that can go gap to the gap and line to line. Uh, Balistrieri, what are we looking for at this doubleheader? Yeah, I mean, TCNJ not dominating the NJAC like they usually do. Pioneers lost both games to them last year, could not get the bats going in those ones, but this is a big NJAC matchup. Both teams looking to move up a bit in the standings, and I think if the Pioneers are able to split in this matchup, they should go home happy. Absolutely. Jimmy? I'm looking for low scoring games. Last season, both games were decided by like four runs or less, not much more than five runs in each game. Uh, a lot of bunting from TCNJ. That's really how they beat us last season. They beat us in the small ball game. A couple of errors got away from us. I want William Patterson to bunt more. A lot of situational times we've seen players strike out, haven't really been able to get runner from first to second, second to third with one zero out. So situational hitting like that, it's going to be the difference in a team like TCNJ who doesn't make many mistakes. Anthony, close this out. Yeah, I like where Gavin went with the pitching here. I'm going to go with the offense for uh, TCNJ. They have a very good offense. Julie Canale, Casey Neveling, Cameron Kitchen each have an OPS over 1,000. If the Pioneers want to win this game, they need to keep those three players contained. Absolutely. Well, we wish the Pioneers the best of luck tomorrow as we throw it over to Anthony and the guys to break down some William Patterson baseball. You are watching William Patterson University Television. Welcome back to the desk. NJAC play is heating up, and here to talk the latest from Jeff Albee's field, we have Anthony, Andrew, Jimmy, and Mikey. The Pioneers took down Rutgers Newark by a final score of 19 to 7 on Thursday. Anthony, take me through this one. Mark, I felt like I was watching a football game yesterday. Yeah. We're going to take a look.